welcome, 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 welcome to the cold hard truth on sports. I apologize in advance if I am out of line here. Brace yourselves, boys. We're going in. Am I hallucinating here? Just what in the hell do you think you are doing? I can't believe you. I'm not reading. I'm just looking at the picture. Welcome to the cold hard truth on sports. Welcome, everyone, to another great week here of the Gold Heart Truth on Sports. I'm your host, Matthew Long, coming back from a little bit of a break post-Super Bowl. We're here the week of the NFL Combine. Look forward to uh, seeing a lot of these college guys on display. I've seen a few of them in their training facilities, and... uh, you know, it, it, it's it's an interesting crop of guys. I uh, I don't think there's as many names in this draft that are going to really people are really clamoring over just right now. But after the end of this week, there will be a few, and I think they're going to more so be defensive players. But this draft class, to me, uh, like I've said, uh, it looks like it's going to be another pretty good draft class. And uh, I really look forward to seeing uh, where these guys go at the end of April. So we're not too far away from that either. I mean, a couple days away from March. Starting. And... We, uh, April's just right after, right around the corner from that. It's, uh, it's pretty, pretty amazing how fast time flies. Uh, speaking of time flying, we got like, uh, is it 20 some, 22 games? 20, 22 games left in the NBA season. And the Lakers, are seeming to just... Are they tanking? Are the Lakers tanking? Because they seem to be losing to the bad teams and they're winning against the good teams. I got a theory and some criticism on that. We'll get to in the show. I know Kevin's going to want to weigh in on, on the Lakers as well. Yes, and Lonzo Ball is out still. I don't know if that's intentional or not. Uh, If it really is something he's struggling with rehab, that's the thing these days. You know, we're, we're in a day and age where you literally think and wonder, is the injury real? Is he faking it? So, I uh, was it? It was uh, Kevin Kiermeyer. Kevin Kiermeyer, uh, the race center fielder, the one, uh, the hunky one. Yeah, the one that the girls were all cooling over for, for a couple of years. He got married, uh, but that's not the news. That was like a year or so ago. I think he's been married for like a year or two now. Uh, but he's been in and out of the lineup a lot because of injury for the Rays. Um, and he just went on this big, uh, like, rant, uh, this declaration that he is not going to get injured. I don't know if he was trying to get injured the previous years. I don't know what his, his MO was there, but, uh, evidently he said, I'm not going to get injured this year. I'm not going to get any, no boo-boos. I'm not going to get hurt. I'm not going to get owies or boo-boos, you know. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna no smarts, you know, n- none of that stuff. I'm not going to get uh, injured in any way and lose time because of injury. The next day, what do you think happens? He's a, he's a scratch because uh, evidently he said he didn't break in the cleats he was using and he got a blister on his heel. 
So he's been out. He's trying to do fielding and batting practice barefooted. And that sounds like a great idea because you want to you wanna put a foul ball into your barefoot. You know, it feels great when you have a shoe on with some pretty sturdy leather. But barefoot, I'm sure, feels better. I don't know. It, you know, it, it, it's, it's just a weird quirk. Don't they have band-aids? I get... I have two blisters on my thumb. We've been working on this uh, renovation, a kitchen, a, a kitchen renovation. Now it's went to the outside and a lot of raking and stuff like that. And I got a blister on the inside of my thumb from raking. And then I switched to put my thumb over the top instead of, you know, grabbing it with my wrist. I put it over the top, you know. Kind of like you know, when you get the the, the uh, uh, bench bar. Some some people put their thumb around. Some people put their thumb under. I just switched my thumb position, and I got a blister on the other side of my hand. As two days ago, and I went out today or yesterday again, and power washed the driveway in the house to, you know, preparation for paint and, and some, and some, uh, some stucco work. And again today, it was raining. It was pouring down rain. Was finishing off the sidewalks and uh, went and took care of some, some stuff on the inside too. So, but... Still, I mean, none of this had stopped me from manually doing labor with my hands. And I wasn't getting paid millions. I won't get millions back out of that. Not, it would be some time. You have to rent out the property for a number of years. You know, I'm not going to do the math on it, but it's a significant period of time. You know, I may never see a million dollars. And profit from that property. Hopefully, I do, but I likely will not. But he got a boo boo on his heel, and it feels ouchy, so he couldn't play. You know, uh, it was, uh, it was like, I was talking about this. Uh, oh, it was uh, Ian Beckles. He was, uh, he was a former. Offensive lineman for the Bucks. He was saying, yeah. He was saying, that, you know, like the last three years of his his career, every single game he had a new pair of shoes. You know. Plus, and that was never an issue. I guess people's skins and stuff is different. That's what band aid and tape is for. You can't numb that? You're, you're telling me that that irritation is so great. I, they have this stuff. It's called new skin. You can put on it. And it it's basically clear fingernail polish. Um, my dad actually used to use it. The fingernail polish is before new skin existed. Uh, if he'd get a blister on his thumb... When he bowled, my dad was a big bowler. I bowled up, you know, until high school. I was actually, I, I lettered in bowling. That's a little, little known fact. Um, one of the sports I lettered in, bowling. I had, I've never missed a pin in tournament play, actually. Ever. I've, I'm perfect. So... No, I'm not, no, it's not a brag. I'm just saying. It was just something that was in the, in the light of the conversation. It's not a brag. What do you mean it's a brag? No. I'm sure that nobody is thoroughly impressed with me not missing pins in bowling. I'm sure I'm not going to get some, you know, new, new 
Twitter followers now. Oh, yeah, you bowled in high school. You were a letter runner in bowling and amongst other sports. That's awesome. You never missed a bowl. I'm, I'm following this guy. He's a bowler. I'm following him. He's definitely a quality follow. Given that he is a, a bowler. I was a bowler to high school. After high school, I really didn't do much bowling. So. Not that I wouldn't. I just don't have time for it right now. I don't. But anyways. But yeah, that's what my dad used to do. He used to put clear fingernail polish over the blister. And the alcohol in it sanitizes, you know, sanitizes it more and uh, helps dry it out and it gives you a clear coat. You put like three or four coats on there, go and touch it up, you know, in between game in between games. So they play in leagues they play three games. So, uh, so he he touch it up in between games. So it, you know, I, I I don't know. I'm not buying the whole blister thing. He couldn't. He's done. Yeah. We don't want to lose for the season. We don't want that blister to fester. That's ridiculous. Right? Am I am I the only one on that? It is, right? Yeah, okay. Thanks for jumping on board there. Eventually. <sighs> Kevin should join us here shortly. What else? Oh, Bob Kraft. Yes, Bob Kraft. New England Patriots owner, Robert Kraft, uh, was caught in a sting operation back in January. The afternoon of the AFC Championship game. I know a lot of people are saying, well, if he's in Jupiter, Florida at a strip mall, Getting some love ya, love ya, long time. Jerky, jerky, happy ending. How would he make it to Kansas City by the evening? He has, he's a billionaire. He has a private plane. <laughs> you know? You know how you go and get in your car and you're like, I'm going to run to the store real quick. He does that with a plane. Go gas the jet. <laughs> I got somewhere to be. Probably just parked that bitch right in the parking lot of, of Arrowhead. I'm sure he did. Odds on favor is he did. You know? Or landed on the interstate. Not too far from him. You could see Arrowhead from the interstate. Uh, but he got caught on video. Twice. Uh, only once in the morning. And then... Once in the afternoon. And the crazy thing, um, if, if, if that isn't the crazy thing, is he, he actually wasn't the biggest name that was caught. Um, several, uh, some CEOs, former bank presidents, and whatnot were uh, caught up in this thing. Over a hundred and some people, they say, uh, were caught up in this sting that they had been doing over a course of of, of months um, into human trafficking. And you know that's really the sad part about it. That that's uh, of all of it. That's probably the most disturbing part of it. Um, and you know, I, 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 I mean, I'll, I'll share my views on it. 
um, because we know human trafficking is clearly an issue. It is. It's something that, you know, law enforcement works tires, uh, tirelessly to stop. Uh, for them, um, why did I, get, I got logged out? Anyways, um, yeah, I'm not good at typing and, 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 and talking at the same time. It's just not a thing of mine. Your passwords changed about a year ago. Okay. All right. Anyways, I'll get back to that in a minute. Um. I don't know why I do it like that. You, you want to figure that out? You want to figure this out? Yeah, thanks. I do a show. Yeah, I don't know why I got it like that. Anyways, um, law enforcement works tirelessly to stop these things. Um, and, and the human trafficking, a lot of it goes to the sex trade industry, the sex industry, sex trade, whatever you want to call it. Um,. Some of it ends up in, you know, you know, trafficking organs on the black market. Some of it's, you know, slavery and indentured servitude. Some, you know, uh, and people, people of all ages. It's not just women and children. People of all ages. It is, and again, human trafficking isn't limited to the sex operation either. People track again, traffic people for other reasons. For labor, you know. Uh, some people, some are trafficked. They traffic some people because they want to be trafficked. You know, they want to be part of it. Uh, that's what the, that's where the the coyote get their money. They traffic people across the border into the U.S. To try to give them uh, an opportunity to make a better living or have a better life. Uh, just go for their American dream. It is illegal. <laughs> um, and, uh, and honestly, most people that come into this country that end up being illegal actually, or they come through ports of entry, they overstay visas. They come on a tourist visa and they say, oh, I guess I'll just get a job. We'll make it a staycation. That's that's the biggest crime when it comes to uh, people in, this, in the United States illegally. Staycationing. Staycationing. Yep, that's it. Staycationing. Um, but the process of being, being trapped is... is, is Highly risky. Because um, there's times where, in some instances, people don't know who they're going with, where they're going. Sometimes they're blindfolded, so they can't see where they're going. There's people that are hoping to get traffic to one place, and they get moved to a different part of the same country. And, and, you know, and held captive or have an organ lopped off, out, and sold. So, it, 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 again, there's a lot of issue revolving around it. And it's much deeper than a 77-year-old man you know, finding a way to deal with his sex life. Right? There's more to it than that. There's a deeper, much more disturbing, profound area of concern. So, uh, I mean, I, I don't have any jokes to make. I, 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 you know, I... I'm surprised they went to a strip mall, though. 
I don't know. I just, you know, it, it, I don't know. It just, it, it seems like, you know, I've seen, see, that's the thing is like people think, oh, caught up in prostitution, their, their, their life's over, their career's over. No, they're not. No. No, it, it's a pretty, something pretty embarrassing. Um, but people rebound from it. There's guys in Tampa Radio. A guy that works for a station in Tampa Radio that got caught up in a stinking stay in Tampa. The guy's still on the radio. And he's not even like a main guy on the radio. <laughs> he's like, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's not even the host or the, the main producer or anything like that. It didn't, it didn't seem to affect his career at all. A lot of people were talking about, oh... Bob Kraft should have to surrender his team. His team? He should have to give up the Patriots. Because he got caught for a misdemeanor crime? Is it did did he R. Kelly this person? Was it was it an R. Kelly situation? Because now I'm 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 gonna need more information. Because you want to take the team away. You want him booted out of the NFL as an owner. You want to take away an asset. An over $5 billion asset. For a misdemeanor crime. I mean, what was, was she underage? What, what, what was, was he... A kingpin and part of this operation getting these people that did he own did he own the place uh, yeah what I mean is his people categorically and categorically you know, do they deny it he's on tape no, I don't want to see the tape. I know you, you know, Jeff Bezos people out there. I know who you Jeff Bezos peakers are. Oh, man. I saw Bezos last week. Oh, man. I got a glimpse of, of Bob Kraft this week. Yeah, no, it's just... Nope. Didn't want to see either. <laughs> nope. Some say he should get the same treatment that Jim Mercy did for his DUI arrest. Sure, why not? Do you want to find him, suspend him? How does suspending an owner, what, what does that help him? How does that, why does that hurt him? You're taking all his revenue from the team, his, his, what, you figure out, like, three months, what, what he would get in those three months, and you take it away from him? I mean, it's not like the owner goes in and, and makes team decisions. Typically, unless you're Jerry Jones, I guess. You know? Outside of hiring a coach, you know? A lot of owners, especially, especially Bob Kraft, are pretty much hands-off. You know? And those that aren't hands off, they, they wish. I, I know Redskins fans wish that Snyder was more hands off. <laughs> They'd like him to be down in Jupiter, Florida instead of around meddling in, in, in team affairs. He just went in to send checks and shut up. So, uh, let me bring uh, my co host, the author of the PK Frazier novel series. And uh, he is a scratch golfer. Yes, scratch golfer. Uh, Mr. Kevin Crest. 
I heard you were in Jupiter uh, last weekend, Kevin. Scratch. No, 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 no. I, I scratch. I scratch it around, but I'm, I'm not a scratch. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm more like a, maybe a 12 handicap. A 12 so I, handicap. I, 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 I tell you, okay, I'm, I'm an all right golfer, but not, not scratch. So 12, what's that? that's an 84? Uh, I do enjoy the game. That's 84? Yeah, I shoot in the low 80s, you know. Okay. That's, that's, uh, that's what I shoot. And uh, if the temperature goes up, I shoot in the high 80s. So, you know, that, that's how that works. So. And if the beer is flowing, hey. it's the high 70s. Right? No? Okay. Maybe yeah, that's me. Uh, the, you know, the, 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 the beer, beer helps. Beer helps. Uh, you know, my handicap goes down as the beers go up. So uh, just ask my wife. Uh, yep. Or my dad. I used to play in, I used to play in um, tournaments with my father. Uh, member guest stuff, and uh, he would always try to make sure I had a Bloody Mary before we teed off because for some reason I played better with a little bit of uh, juice in my system. Yeah, you got to uh, so calm those, uh, those anyway, nerves, Kevin. Uh, I hear uh, you, you take a, a shot I'm of tequila not, before coming on the air every night, you know, every week here. No, 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 no. I don't, no, no. I, I'm, I'm like one of those country songs. Tequila and I don't work. But, I don't know. Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, I think maybe, maybe a little. Maybe a. Uh, a I little, think we're little, thinking a different. Push light or something. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I think we're thinking a different country songs, Kevin, because I hear tequila makes the clothes come off. Uh, I, I hope that's not no, the that's situation. That's a different song. That, that, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's that, that's one that that's one that comes to mind. <laughs> I mean, Kenny Chesney has a couple with tequila. Yeah, that just yeah yeah. No no tequila, but anyway. So uh, were you talking? I I didn't get quite catch what your. Uh, were you talking about... Uh, oh, you know me. I'm just kind of rambling on about, about everything. We came on the air? As we, as we came on the air? <laughs> um, I, I, I was just talking about Bob Kraft getting caught in January in a sting operation in Jupiter, Florida. Uh, amongst hundreds and some other people. Some, several much bigger names than he is. Maybe not as wealthy as he is, but bigger names like uh, uh, former bank bank presidents and well, stuff like that. Well, well, the first one that comes to mind that that could be involved in Jupiter, Florida, is Tiger I Woods. Not, but yeah, you know, Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods. I mean, well, he was in Mexico. Like down his. Well, I guess I guess that was not, in January last week. Yeah, last week. Yes, but January. Week before that, he was in L.A. But the guy's got his own private jet; he can get anywhere. But I'm, I'm hoping that's not. I mean, I, I, you know I, I'm kidding that if it, if it had been him, we'd heard we'd have heard about that by now, right? I mean, we probably would have heard about. So know, um, I, we don't involve him, but um, we don't talk politics. We kind of make it a point to not really talk politics um, much, if ever, on the show. I think. Last political thing we talked about, I guess, was Kaepernick, if that's considered political. Um, but I don't know. I, 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 I was talking with a friend of mine who uh, who has ran. He, he's he's a he's a representative in the Tampa area, and I'm I'm pretty moderate when it comes to pretty much everything in life. Um, Life is full of gray with some black and white. That's kind of my philosophy. And, you know, I, and I was kind of getting, building up to it, but, you know, we, we talk about, you know, human trafficking is an issue going through this, the sex trade. You know, uh, that's a big part. But then again, that's the core of why, what this thing was about. They're, we're trying to find people that are getting caught up in, 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 Human trafficking and sex trafficking, and uh, and you know to make sure that you know people aren't being used and abused and and they're not uh, circumventing the system. But the thing is, we don't have a system in place. So I mean, full disclosure. I mean, I mean, let me ask you this: should, If feminists shouldn't feminists be out right now, like going hardcore for prostitution? I mean. A right to their own body. I, I don't know, because it, it, it seems like it's to the point well, where yeah. you want to, you want to, you, you, you want to 
stop pro you, you're fighting it's just like prohibition you, you're fighting you're fighting uphill against something that is, is an actual natural function of people um, again my moral and spiritual side is against it but I'm just saying just from a purely economic standpoint uh, maybe uh, maybe a more logical standpoint and again maybe this is something that comes up in the 2020 as we get into the 2020 elections legalizing it and regulating it same way they're doing with marijuana well let's let's take this to the sports analogy because that's what we do right we're yeah we do sports um you know we're kind of we're kind of the point where we're about to allow college athletes, scholarship athletes, to have to benefit from their own likeness, right? I mean, there's a, there's a big push to say, wait a second, you know, if, if Zion Williamson's the greatest guy on the planet, which until he got his knee blown out last week was. Shouldn't he get to benefit from his own likeness, whether he's on scholarship or not, right? I mean, I'm just saying that's where we are. So if, if you extrapolate that to a woman and her body, um, shouldn't she get to use her body however she wants to use her body? I mean, if some, if some 77-year-old geezer like Bob Kraft is willing to pay her to have sex with him, shouldn't she have that right? I mean, I mean, I, I'm, and I'm not, I'm not talking morals or, I mean, yeah. I'm not talking all that, yeah. but, but in, saying from a, from and a, this was from, even, from a right to your own body standpoint, right? And this I mean, was I, even I, I more so, I, I really have never, massage with a happy ending, rather than actual, sex, like intercourse, coitus, it was, you know? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, but, but don't, Shouldn't she have the right to say what somebody does with her body? I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm not, I'm just saying that yeah. if you take that, and I'm not, of course, and I'm also not extrapolating the fact to say that college athletes are prostitutes either. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> trying to make that connection, but, <laughs> but, but we all have, but, but, but there's a, there's a point where you say you no, have a right. But at Louisville, there are, there um, are prostitutes on the staff. Right. There are. We know from that investigation. Well, so, uh. yeah, that's and, that's, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and that's a right. It, but that, but that's the other side of it. I'm yes, talking yes, about yes. it, and, and you and you brought it up from the side of, from the state. Now, now, in terms of the of what happened in South Florida, what they were really trying to get to is that these women had no had no choice. They were. Yeah. Exactly. They were, they were being taken advantage of. They were sex slaves, right? Right. And so, I mean, this was a sting op. Listen, I bought probably sting operation. Apparently, and I heard this on Dan Patrick today, he had a source that said that the way that the, the, way that the, the police got the cameras into that particular establishment or that they, that they staged a fake, a fake bomb raid. And this is a strip center with like, eight or ten businesses in it and the only business that was notified of the supposed bomb raid was that particular business the massage business and they got in there they 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 you know they they um, uh made sure that everyone's out of the building and they got in they put the cameras in so you know i have a problem with sting operations in, in this in the sense that that they were out to, to get somebody, um, and <laughs> listen, Bob Kraft is probably going to weep, uh, is probably going to find a way out of this through some plea bargaining or something like that. But if what they really wanted, if they really wanted was the sex traffickers, why go after the, the poor sons of guns that go in as Johns? I mean, why not just arrest them and under sex trafficking? I mean, there's, there's some hypocrisy here about this particular, yeah, you know, um, endeavor that I think is going to have to come out in, in, in court and depositions and some other things. I mean, I'm not, 
Listen, Roger Kraft is 77 years old. He's a divorce. His, his wife died a couple of years ago. I mean, come on. His, is that who you really want to His on? girlfriend... The one that he's been with for a couple for for three or four years, a couple years ago, had a baby by someone else. It wasn't his baby, so it's like uh, for she wasn't being, uh, you know, faithful. Yeah, but 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 my point is, is, is this who you want to? I mean, they weren't targeting Bob Kraft. I mean, he just happened to get caught in the middle of this stuff, right? I mean, it wasn't. He wasn't who they were going after, uh, for the most part. But, but my, yeah, so I mean, this story, unfortunately, you know, the the league's going to do something eventually about this. And this is from a sports standpoint. This is this has legs. I mean, this is great for us because we get to talk about. So, so in two thousand, was it two thousand fifteen, two thousand sixteen with with with. Um, uh, the flake gate, um, Robert Kraft fell on his sword for the state of the league, and then they still they still um, suspended Tom Brady for four games. You know, Kraft was like, "Oh, commissioner, I'll, I'll you know we'll, we'll pay your million dollar fine, which they did, and we'll take the heat." If, but they still suspended. So there's some there's some stuff between Kraft and Goodell that's going to you know kind of be interesting about this whole case too. I mean. Um, a few years ago, uh, Jim Irsay, the owner of the Colts, got uh, convicted of a DWI. They fined him five hundred thousand dollars and suspended him for I think it was six games. How, six games. how does that work? So, that's what I that's what I was getting at right when you came on. Was what does suspending him do? Like most owners are pretty much hands off for day to day stuff. I mean. Unless you're hiring a coach well, in the middle of the he season, can't be at the game. you know. Yeah, he can't be at the game. He, he can't be in the office. He's basically, you know, he can't he can't do any football related activities. Like 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 you know, um, he, he is uh, blacked uh, out on his I mean, TV at it's home. Kind of hard to suspend an owner. I mean, I mean, it's hard to suspend an owner because you can't say he's not an owner for six weeks. It's like yeah. oh, like what the vice president takes over or something. I mean, <laughs> so, but. They, they do. They do get limited. They, their their activities around the football part of it are limited. But I'm Bob pretty Kraft, sure they I'm are already. He, he's not just right. And I, I think I heard you say uh, near the end of. I, I think I caught out the end of it. Was like I mean, you've got hands on guys like Jerry Jones and Dan Snyder. Who, yeah. If you suspended them, would be a much bigger deal, right? Because yeah. because they're well. I was they're saying it might be beneficial for Washington, for team, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're 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 in there all the time. Uh, Bob Kraft has other stuff he's doing. Yeah, he just happened to, you know. But but I mean, he I, has. You know, he this has is going to be a really money. interesting case for for Roger Goodell, but because once this gets adjudicated, and they're not going to do anything until it gets adjudicated. Because they've already the NFL made a statement late last week. I mean, they came out. They, they were on top of this. They came out right away and were like. Well, we've got certain rules, and we're not going to do that until yada 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 yada. <laughs> we're process. not going to do anything until until this until the courts, you know, decide on this. But you know, at the end of the day, from what I understand, and, and from what the police say, there's there's some pretty prejudicial video evidence against Bob Kraft, and so he probably did it. I mean, he says he's innocent now. Innocent of what is is a big deal. He went to a massage parlor, and the massage therapist decides to do something that you didn't pay for, and that's probably going to be his defense. It's just like, wait a second, I just went in for a massage. <laughs> I just went in for a massage, and this other thing happened, and I, you know, it was it was on them. They did it, which is going to be their defense. Okay, it's your only defense. Uh, and so we'll see. But if, if the bigger mark is the, is the sex trafficking, which is what I understand this is all about, and, and, I'm, and that's it should be about that, right? I mean, that's a big problem in, in the world today is, is, is you know, kidnapping women, uh, certain parts of the world, bringing them to other parts of the world, 
and, and making them engage in, in you know, in, in, in sex acts. Um, if this helps stop that, if they can get to the top of the food chain, that's great. But convicting love or class of a misdemeanor, if, if it goes no, no further than that, doesn't help anything at all. All it does is just create a bunch of news for us to talk about on sports talk radio. But, but we'll see. I mean, I, I, I believe that uh, uh, at the end of the day, craft, listen, deeper with money, they, they, they'll find a way to, you know, probably plead this down or whatever. I mean, it's, just a, it's a first degree misdemeanor to begin yeah. with. It's, it's, it's hardly a crime, right? I mean, it, it's hardly anything anyway. It is, again. I mean, As we were saying, me, maybe it's debatable me, if we, it should be a crime. I don't pay, know. <laughs> yeah, it, for you and me, we we pay a five hundred dollar fine and be done with it. Yeah, right. I mean, that'd be it. Well, Robert Kraft is rich and famous, and so you know he's trying to he's trying to plead guilt. He's trying to say, well, we didn't do it. Yeah, it wasn't a thing. And you know, the the, the question is, is he is he better off just going? Yeah, I got a. Excuse my French to family people out there. Okay, sorry, I got a blowjob. Yeah. Didn't do it. I was going to get it. You caught you caught me. Here's my five hundred dollars. You know, I, I'll take my I'll take my medicine. Be out of here. Done. I mean, do you remember? Do, that. do you remember Johnny Johnny Del Pret, Del Preet, Del Preet? He's a golfer. He was on uh, the Web dot com tour. He's a no, I do not. The boyfriend of uh, Jessica Corda. You know the LPGA golfer. Yes, uh, sister of Nelly Corda, who actually won a couple weeks ago. Yeah, um, I saw Paul the so, LPGA. Yes. So yes. her her boyfriend. Sisters, 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 sisters boyfriend. Who are the, yeah. the daughters of uh, of the former hockey player. Oh, really? Huh. That their father, their father was a hockey player. That's how he's. That's how they're American citizens. He, he came here in the states. He's a, he was a Dutch hockey player, played in the NFL. A, excuse me, NHL. And uh, I actually interviewed uh, interviewed Nelly after the Women's U.S. Open last year. So yes, and they okay. said Happy Gilmore I, doesn't I change lives. The, but <laughs> so what what happened to him? Uh, he was caught up in the same sting too. Ah, okay, okay. That was the golfer that got caught up, not Tiger. At least not yet. I don't know. I, I, so, I haven't seen anything about Tiger yet. So, <laughs> I, so when they, I think a lot of people when they heard so Jupiter Kraft, I mean, and Kraft isn't the biggest name, I think a lot of people oh, was like, "Oh course. shit, Tiger Woods." Of course. <laughs> like, of course, <laughs> of course. No question. I mean, that's who you think about. Right? I mean, yeah. you've given his past. I mean, it's not like that's a. That's not a that's not a huge leap of, I mean, from from you know from Denny's to a massage parlor is not a not a big leap. I mean, he did that to himself. I mean, that, we didn't do that to him. Yeah, he, he he set himself up for that, right? I mean, so for us to, to think that maybe it could have been him, it's that he probably lives like three blocks from there. I and mean, Jupiter's not the biggest place on the planet. I mean, it's a, it's a yeah. So um, he might have went in a golf cart too. I, I'm that's thinking very that, possible. Well, I, I'm thinking that I'm thinking that that Tiger's probably learned his lesson from all that. Cause, yeah, uh, and I, I would I would certainly hope so. Um, but uh, uh, and by the way, for for their listeners and people who read, the, I'll, be, I'll be posting a uh, uh, a piece tomorrow about the the, LP, uh, the PGA Tour because uh, we're you know we're just now kind of starting the season. I know. We're a third of the way through, or, or more than a third of the way through the, the, the wraparound season. But the tour heads to Florida this week. <laughs> Coincidentally, not far from Jupiter, Florida. Yeah. <laughs> at, at, at the Honda Classic in South Florida, um, like eight miles from Jupiter. Uh, but um, you know, it, it feels like golf's just now starting, right? Because... We're two weeks from uh, from the Players Championship and six weeks from the Masters, and then you know the whole the the whole thing kicks in from now till August. And, and so, 
you know, golf now all of a sudden it's like, oh, it's golf season. Um, you know, people don't, you know, you look at those Poana greens and Kikuya grass in California, you go, that's ah, not golf. You know, golf is, is Bermuda greens and green grass and sunny, warm weather, and that's what we're going to get from, you know, now, from, from here till the end of the season. So, uh, uh, Are you going to the Valspar? Uh, uh, what's that? Are, are you going to be at the Valspar this year? No. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm probably uh, most likely going to be following more of the, 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 the Champions Tour. I've got uh, credentials for the Champions Tour up in Missouri. I've got, I'm, I'm probably going to get credentials for the LPGA uh, Women's um, U.S. Open in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, there's a LPGA tournament here locally, so I'll, I'll probably be following the the champions. Or the, excuse me, the uh, L, you know, the uh, um, PGA Tour champions and the the LPGA. Uh, you know, um, in person uh, this year. Uh, hopefully, they get get some uh, PGA Tour credentials next year. But um, no, I won't be down there. But uh, yeah, the, the the thing interesting is, and it's, I'll, I'll bring this up in my piece tomorrow that I'll that I'll post on on our site. You know, this the the season has been compressed in golf because they they did the smart thing. They're they're going to finish it up in August before the NFL starts playing, and so that that was precipitated by the the players champion the players tournament moving from May back to March, the PGA moving from August into May, the FedEx Cup playoffs shrunk from four weeks to three weeks in August, which will be crowning the FedEx Cup champion uh, the week before football season. Great move by the PGA Tour, great move, but by compressing the schedule, they've made it a little more difficult for some of these players to play in some of the tournaments that they ordinarily would have played with. Like this week, Tiger's not playing at the um, Honda Classic. In fact, a lot of players aren't playing at the Honda Classic this week because they just played Pebble Beach, Riviera, the WGC Championship in Mexico. They need a week off because they've got um, next week is the Arnold Palmer Invitational, which is a big tournament, it's an invitational, which carries with it extra FedEx Cup points and all sorts of uh, uh, um, extra incentives to play. Then the following week, they go to the players, and so a lot of players would have had to play five, six weeks in a row if they didn't skip this week. So, looking at the field, the only t- the only top player in the field is Justin Thomas, and he's there because he's a defending champion. Okay, um, and so. You know, he, he, we'll see what he, he may skip on a Palmer, which is unfortunate, but you got to skip somewhere because it's compressed schedule. It, it's, it's great in, in the sense that it, that the big event, all the players are there because of the compressed schedule. The, the disadvantage is that some of these other events, and I'll, I'll say the Dallas Bar in Tampa is one of them, are, are going to have some less than stellar fields, at least at the top of the, World rankings, okay. Listen, any tournament's great because all these guys can play golf. But you're not going to see you're not going to see Tiger and Phil and Justin and Dustin and Jordan and those guys at at the basketball. You're just not because it's yeah. You know, you've got the Masters coming up, so the, you know. So we'll see how it works out. I mean, I, I think I think over time there'll be a big because. The top players also don't play the wraparound part. The, you know, the season starts in October, but Tiger and Justin and Dustin and those, they don't play early in the season. Xander Shoffley won twice. Um, Matt Kucha won a couple times. But you know, when it comes to the calendar year, that's when those guys step in. So they're, they're going to have to re- reevaluate their schedules to see how they can you know, navigate through this stuff and, with the majors and with the PGA moving to May, which is a great thing. Uh, it brings more venues into play, all that kind of stuff. But what was that to say? But this, this week suffers. Because um, last year the field was, was stellar. 
he had all the great, all the, all the good players play last year, but not this year because they, they had to, they had to, to move a tournament. Okay. Um, and those guys want to be ready for the players, which is in my estimation. And, and I will be, I will be posting a, a piece in the next week or so about making a case for the players being in the fifth major and they should retroactively make it of a, a major and all that kind of stuff. I'll go back and do that. Uh, but that's a big tournament. That's, it's the strongest field of the year on the PGA Tour. Um, typically, of the 156 players, you've got the top 150 whatever in the world playing. It's, it's the strongest field of the year because it's very democratic. So, um, but, uh, you know, we shall see. I, I'm, I'm excited. So it's golf now. It, it, it was 60 degrees here in Arkansas. I, I, I actually took my golf clubs out and they're going to the car tomorrow. So uh, I, I may actually start playing here pretty soon. So. Well, uh, I don't think they stopped playing here in Florida. Yeah, just rub that in. They have to just rub it in. I, I, I saw it was, it was uh, 78 in Orlando today. Oh, man, I, mean, I got a, I'm dealing with a sunburn right now, actually. True story. Uh, Didn't expect uh, it. I was uh, Saturday no, morning, woke no up. No sympathy. No sympathy here. No, there's stuff called sunscreen, dude. I mean, it's just... No, no I didn't expect... No, no, no. I didn't expect intense sun rays to um, invade me like that. You know, uh, I feel... I, I, I feel like I was caught in, a, in some sort of sun sting operation. And I'm... Uh, I should not be guilty of this. <laughs> I was just out trying to work in the yard and then go and volunteer at my kids' school and uh, and the son uh, took advantage of doing something I didn't expect it to do. I'm just saying I get where Bob Kraft is coming yeah, from. Call, I'm just saying, whatever, whatever. Yeah, call, call Bob. <laughs> He's got some answers for you on your son, on your son, on your, on your son sting, whatever that yeah, is. I mean, it, you know. So, uh, so, oh, by so the way, uh, so. Epsom salt rub with aloe is not aloe. It does something very different to a sunburn that you don't want to do to a sunburn. What? I found that what? out. Just stick with the aloe. Well, there's aloe Just in it. Stick with the aloe. I couldn't aloe find works. the aloe, so I went with the Epsom salt rub that helps. Uh. It was for pain. It really, I got it for my wife because she had a, you know, something in her, her wrist, an issue in her wrist, and for pain because she, because aloe, aloe vera helps with pain. I don't know if a lot, anybody knew that, but I couldn't find the aloe, and then that was specially designed for it. So it was Epsom salt because it says that helps with the inflammation, and now aloe helps with the pain. Well, it does not do something favorable for sunburns, just so people know. It, well, the salt's not, but the aloe will. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I will, I'm going to give a shout out tonight to my Hokies at Virginia Tech. Knocked off Duke tonight. So Breaking we, news. We head to NCAA March Madness. That's a yeah. That's a, that's a hot take. Um, as we head to uh, March Madness, and I will be I will be attending the first two rounds this year. As you know, I go. Somewhere every year, right? Yep. Um, and this year I will be in Tulsa for the first two rounds with my college roommate from many, many years ago. We're going over to Tulsa. But uh, the Hokies Leonardo beat Leonardo Da tonight. Vinci. Without, now, Duke, now, Duke was without Zion Williamson, you know, arguably the best player in the country. But Virginia Tech was also without their best player, Justin Robinson, their, their All-American point guard. And so, uh, great game. Hokies held on, beat Duke. Um, so, you know, it, it, as we as we start to look at and, and 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 Matthew, I'll have a piece up probably within the next week about looking at the the field. You know, kind of my take on where we are for the sixty eight teams right now. I'll, I'll put something up there. Um, but that puts that puts Virginia Tech into the top four in the ACC, which. Um, 
would give them a double buy in, into into uh, the AC tournament. But you know, Texans interesting team because they're they're twenty two and six, but three of those losses came without their starting point guard, who's who's expected to be back next week. And so you start looking at teams that can make a run in the tournament. I mean, and we're talking about teams that have older players. And so I'll, I'll, I'll write a piece on that in the next week to, to, to kind of give a, a take on that because every year you've got some team that, that gets to the final eight or final point. You go, oh, my gosh, where'd they come from? Not, not a big surprise. All these one-and-done teams, the Dukes and the, you know, uh, the, you know the, the, the Kentuckys and, and the Kansases that start three, four freshmen, they don't, they don't tend to make it. Um, experience it's a big player. I watched last night Kansas State lost to Kansas, but you know it's a rivalry game. Kansas was coming off a bad loss. I mean, it was at Kansas. When you put these teams on neutral courts, I think Kansas State's a team to watch out for. You know, Virginia Tech's team to watch out for. You got some teams to really watch out for that can make a run, um, and. Uh, We'll see. So it's, get, it's getting to really – listen, this is yeah, – once the Super Bowl is done, you're looking to March Madness, right? I mean, that's what you're looking for. Absolutely. And, uh, this year it's wide open. It's wide open. Uh, North Carolina has a terrific team. I mean, Luke May's been there like I, – I think Luke May started in 1990 at, at UNC. I think, I think that's how long he's been there. Um, I, think, I think he was there when Dean Smith was there. <laughs> And he's still playing. Um, you know, so you've got these experienced teams like Carolina with talent and youth and experience. And um, Villanova's tanking. They're not going to be there this year. Um, but, but it's going to be interesting. Um, it's, it's all, and it's all, it's all on the East Coast. I mean, there's nothing West Coast. I mean, the, the Pac-12 is horrible. Um, you know, you, you, you get the Big 12. you got Gonzaga out there. Um, they're working. So you got you got one team out there, so it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be really fun. You know, we've got uh, so uh, two weeks. Yeah, two more weeks left in the regular season, uh, and then the the conference tournaments will, will be played. Uh, the big ones, anyway. Uh, and then then you've got uh, got selection Sunday on uh, the. March 17th, election Sunday, St. Patrick's Day. Now that's, now that's a reason to drink some green beer and sit in front of tele- television and watch who's going to get into the tournament. Um, and so that'll be the last day of the conference tournament. It's a little bit late this year, but um, and as I said, I'm heading to Tulsa. Uh, we usually have, this year might be different. Usually uh, we get Kansas, but Kansas probably isn't going to be a number one seed this year. They've lost too many games, so uh, it's going to be interesting who, who they send who they send to Tulsa. Um, you know, it's probably going to be the fourth number one seed from somewhere that has to go outside the region, and so it'll be it'll be fun to see who we see. So, you know, I uh, I, I I wonder. Why it is that you know we, we see it so heavy, and again, it's 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 kind of the same way in football. Like college sports, you can pretty much take Tornado Alley and just go east. And you know, I wonder why it is like that. It doesn't matter what it is, if it's football or basketball. But California, you know, yeah, and, and, the West Coast just seems to be considered yeah, right more now, so for I mean, baseball than anything. It's baseball. Yeah, right now. Yeah, right now it's interesting, Matthew, that you bring that up. And I think it's just a. I think it's just kind of a. I don't think there's anything long term to be made of it. But I mean, when you look at the college basketball right now, you're looking at um, Duke, North Carolina, Kentucky, Tennessee. Um, Kansas, generally, but not this year. But you've got some good teams. I mean, you've got you've got some. Hey, 
He's got a couple of Mac attack teams. Buffalo has a terrific basketball team. Um, I mean, we usually talk about the Mac in, in football, right? Upsets and things like that. But Buffalo is ranked like 21st, I think. Um, yeah, it, for, the, for some reason, the, the, now, you've had some issues. You've got some of the, uh, Arizona with, with, uh, 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 with their problems with their coach uh, implicated in this uh, foot, uh, uh, shoe scandal. USC, UCLA aren't up to snuff. Washington hasn't been good. I mean, I, I, the Pac-12 might only get like one team or two teams in the tournament. And that's, that's unprecedented when you think about, you know, yeah. in the past what the Pac-12 has been, right? I mean, it's, it's really, it's really, and, and then, you, and then you come east and you go Texas Tech, beat the crap out of Kansas on Saturday. They, that's a good basketball team. So the Big 12 has, you know, three or four teams. Um, yeah, it, it, it's interesting. There isn't anything out west, outside of Gonzaga, that, that really has a shot at anything um, uh, at all. And it's all in the east. Now, I, I, I think that, I don't think that's anything except just kind of dumb luck of the, of the way things are right now. Um, you know, I, there's some coaching issues. In the Pac-12, there's some, you know, but uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't know that that's indicative of anything long term in terms of a trend because uh, those teams have been good. But this year, it's all it. it I mean, if you plot the, if you plot the top twenty-five, it, it, it's you know, it's it, it's it looks like a uh, you know an east eastern part of the United States trend. I mean, uh, the best team. I mean, Michigan State has lost a few games, but they're still really, really good. Um, and you've got some teams down the down the list. I mean, Syracuse has beaten Duke. They they lost to Duke uh, on Saturday, but Syracuse when they when they put that zone defense up, I mean, and, you know, they made the final four a couple of years ago without you know having a, a lot of success in regular season. There's teams like that. Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech throttled Duke tonight. And, and Duke, even without even without Zion Williamson, they have two top five draft picks on that team. Uh, RJ Baird and uh, uh, Radish. And and Virginia Tech with they're playing with six guys because Robinson's out. They they were able to to, to hold Duke to under sixty points and win the game. And so you've got teams like that that when they get to the tournament, you look at, at LaSalle last year, right? The, the, um, and I, I had the, I, I was at the region, the, the, uh, the first and second round in Dallas where LaSalle was playing and they beat Tennessee and, and uh, who else they beat. But they, just, they were an experienced, guard driven team that could just stifle you defensively. And, and when it comes to the tournament, Teams tend to be more conservative on offense, and so it plays into the hands of teams like that. And so, you know, you've got teams, you know, around the country that you look at and you go, "Oh, they could make a run." Maryland in, in the Big Ten, okay, they don't score a lot, but they 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 defense. And and so these running gun teams like like North Carolina, as talented as they are, you know, if, if they face a team that can just at least contain them for a period of time. They, they get impatient and they, they, they do stupid things and they, they don't they don't win the game. But um, that, that's why this year, we seem to say it almost every year, but 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 I think this year more than even ever, if, if Duke does not get Zion Williamson back, this is wide open. If, if Zion Williamson comes back to Duke in the next week or two and he's healthy, the Duke's a team to beat. And I'm going to put Kentucky as number two because they are so talented. Um, and then you got you know, the Tennessee and Michigan State and Can you know, some others. But that that's where I'm going to go with that. Uh, Gonzaga uh, is in that mix. But it, it should be a lot of fun this year, as it, as it always is. And and I'll be there for the first two first two rounds in Tulsa. Hopefully, we get a good game. 
with with because I know we talked a little bit earlier. This could be one of the last Final Fours with really a large amount of blue chip talent. Because we discussed, you know, we were talking a little bit earlier, as as more as it seems to be progression seems to be pushing more towards enabling college athletes to get at least paid for their likeness. Which, you know, we both agree on that 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 should be an option. Uh, but the NBA, I don't think, likes that. And paying players, um, it hasn't been finalized yet. But from what I've understood, my sources said the plan is for the NBA to move back to 18. So they're getting rid of the one and done rule. You only have to be 18 to go into the NBA. You currently, right now, can go from high school to the G League. It did not stop you from that. You could go to the G League for a year and, and make money off your likeness and, or go to Europe. You know, there's a lot of options out there that you can make basket. But, but the thing is, you don't get the, the same quality of clo- coaching. You don't get near the experience. You don't get anywhere close to the amount of exposure. If you just wanted to make money off your likeness and, and play, you know, the highest available qual- you know, the highest available quality of players, of talent, of, of competition, go to the G League. You can do that right away. Well, you know? Yeah, you can. But you're you're not getting you're not getting coached by John Calipari or, or, or Mike Krzyzewski exactly. or uh, or um uh I mean, Williams at at um at UNC or Bill Self at Kansas and uh, but now, and the, the problem with this is this is a collectively bargained, you know, stipulation in the NBA. And, and the, the collective bargaining agreement in the NBA doesn't, doesn't expire until 2024, I believe. I, I believe it's 2024. So to get rid of the one and done rule, they'd have to go back to the union to re- you know, renegotiate the collective bargaining agreement that's currently in place. Now, I know Adam Silver, the commissioner of the NBA, is is in favor of doing away with the one and done and letting kids come out and, and going more towards a, a soccer-type environment or baseball. You know, Listen, baseball has the best rule. NCAA baseball has the best rule. You come out of, you come out of high school, sign a contract with the... With the with the Major League Baseball team, which, by the way, Kyler Murray did, right? Um, uh, or sign with a, a, a college baseball team and play for three years. Great deal. Now, I've heard the NBA, the, the, the NBA is more, wants to do more of a two-year thing. I, I, I get that, I, you know, whatever. But the trouble with this is, this is collectively bargained with the union, the NBA. And so it's not on Adam Silver or the NCAA. It's on the players in the NBA. And do you, do you really think they want more competition coming in earlier? I mean, it's in their best interest, right, not to have the kids come out of high school. So, exactly. So it's, it's right, right? So, you know, you know listen, I, I applaud Zion Williamson for wanting to come back and play. Um, he has a choice. Now, Kyrie Irving in 2011, no, excuse me, 2010, when he was a senior, when he was a, a freshman at Duke, he, he injured, he was injured early in the season. And he stayed out most of the season. And I believe he came back late and, and, and Duke won, won the national championship that year. But he stayed out most of the year. He didn't play. And, of course, we now know more about Kyrie Irving and his attitude and whatever since he's been a pro. But, I mean, I, I wouldn't 
I would not fault Zion Williamson for saying, I'm shutting it down. No. I'm not faulting him for that. I, I, I don't think he's going to do it. I think he's going to play. He, he seems to be the kind of young man that wants to play basketball and wants to help his team. But, but I wouldn't fault him for shutting it down, would you? I mean, he already, had a, he already tweaked his knee. Yeah. The, guy, the, the guy's a potential overall number one pick, right? He tweaks that knee again this year? Oh, so I don't, I don't fault him at all because, because I think he should be able to come out after, after high school. I mean, what, why are you limiting these guys? You know, we, you've talked about this. We've talked about this at, at, on a number of shows. I believe they should just be able to come out and play whenever they want. I mean, if he's a rock star, if he's a musician, he gets to play whenever he wants. Why, why are we limiting these guys? Right? It's not football. It's not what we're trying to protect them from grown men hitting kids. And, and by the way, Zion Williamson, clearly, it's a grown man. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> You've seen him play basketball. Yeah, he, he can certainly hold his own in an NBA, an NBA basketball court, right? Yeah. And so I, you know, I, 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 but but I think he's probably going to come back. But um, it, it, it's the whole question about likeness and who who can benefit. I mean, it's ludicrous. Listen, and we've talked about this before. I think the NCAA, frankly, is that with their usefulness. I think they need to. I think the NCAA basically has to be disbanded and, and put and, and another organization put in its place to serve the, the purposes that we have today. I think the NCAA is a, as a, an administrative body to put together uh, tournaments and, and those kinds of things, um, events, is fine. But in terms of regulating and, and uh, adjudicating the sports, I, I, think they're, I think they're in the way over their head. I mean... You know, if they want to put together, you know, regional track meets and, you know, set up the NCAA tournament uh, and, and, you know, all those kinds of all those kinds of things, they do a great job of it, by the way. And I go every year. I go somewhere every year. They do such a great job of that. So I don't want to throw, the, throw them under the bus for all that because those tournament games, the, you know, those regionals and all that stuff, are, are, they're run flawlessly. They do such a great job. <laughs> But when it comes to the rest of it, they, it's a train wreck. It's a train wreck. And so I'd, I'd like to see something. I'd, I'd like to see somebody, you know, like a, like a commissioner, you know, of college athletics or each sport. They've talked about that, right? Because each sport's different. You know, basketball is way different than football in, in terms of how it all works and, and uh, all, those, all those things. I'd love. To, I mean, I'd love to see a guy like Jay Billis, for instance. He he would never do it because he doesn't want all the headaches. But that guy's a lawyer. He and he's a former basketball player. He's an announcer. He would be great as head of college basketball. He would be some you know somebody like that. You know, to to be the head of college basketball. Um, you know, it would be fantastic. Um, but the NCAA's got to, we've got to, we've got to get rid of this log jam that, you know, these, all these rules that, you know, well, that's just contradictory the thing. at times. Well, that's the thing is like the, the NCAA, you know. the thing is the NCAA just doesn't have resources to do any of that stuff. So they shouldn't even try to do any of that stuff. There is no, there's really no governing body at all. And that's the problem. And I know that's that's kind of what, you know, the, the, the dead horse that we keep beating on is there is no governing body. And you can't, you know, you know, you can't even, you, they have this quasi-judicial role, you know, pertaining to specific club, because that's what it is, the club, it's a, it's a membership. They have a membership to this club called the, you know, National Collegiate Athletic Association. They have a membership with them. And if they broke the club rules, you get punished. But at the end of the day, they have no real authority. But the NCAA, what they, if, if they, if, I mean, because they're going by laws like Title IX and stuff. 
You know, there, there's a lot of law implicated in what they do. I, I definitely think that they need to have somebody in, in, you know, be able to have somebody that oversees it, you know. Uh, same way you have an attorney general that oversees for the state, they should, there should be, uh, you know, an appointed uh, president to oversee uh, college sports. Each sport have its own, you know. Um, yeah, I agree. I totally agree. I mean, yeah. and, and you know, you kind of have, you, you kind of have the framework in place a little bit. It, you have the college football playoff committee, right? Yeah. Now, now, they, their 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 job is just you know determine who's in the playoffs. But you have to you have the framework for an organization that. Why not just put more responsibility in those guys? Because these are these are all seasoned, smart people. I mean, this is a this is a fantastic group of people. Those twelve people on that in that committee. Why not throw some more responsibility on them? I mean, I'm just saying that you know, give the give the commissioner whoever it is um, a, a, a broader powers and take it to the committee because those because it's not working. I mean. I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not critical of the people involved in the subway. I'm not. I'm not saying they're bad people, but we all know that it's not working, right? It, it's not. Yeah. It's not serving its purpose, right? That, that's my point. It, yeah, at least not, not fully. They're bad or they're in. But the organization itself is not serving the purpose uh, that we think it should serve. And so let's make some changes. That's all I'm saying. I mean, let's be let's be judicious about it. Let's not be knee jerk, but let's let's figure out a way to, to come up with an organization that can actually because because they're supposed to be about the student athletes, and the student athletes are the ones that get shafted. But they are. We know that. I mean, that that's not even a that that's not a point of discussion. I I think most experts and most journalists and most Sports media people would, would say that the disenfranchised group with the current system is the student athlete. Because Nick Saban's doing just fine. Right? I mean, Urban Meyer did just fine. Um, you know, the coaches are doing just, just great. But can we the administration is doing great? Can we can can we network, all come to an understanding? The networks are doing great. That there there aren't there aren't college players starving that are that are homeless, like seemingly homeless and starving, and can I, can we? No, they're not. I mean, they're, they're not. Can we concede they're, they're, that they're getting compensated to to an extent? And, and, and I will say that that the the, the change that they made. To allow the, the the colleges to compensate students for the uh, cost of attendance was a was a huge step forward, right? Right, but but you still have the the situations where listen, when the coaches are making millions and the people producing the product are making nothing. I mean, they, they make they, they do get a college education. Don't get me wrong, but but when when Kyler Murray, who's obviously a superstar, or uh, oh let, 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 let's let's take a better example because Kyler Murray's done. Trevor Lawrence at Clemson, right? Yeah. He's a freshman. He's nineteen years old. He can't go to pro for two more years, and he can't even benefit from his likeness. That's wrong. I mean, that's just wrong. I mean, well, because he's constrained. Right? We're, so, the well, university, the thing is, how, he how can. Many, how, many, how, many jerseys, how many jerseys do you think they're going to sell with Trevor Lawrence's number on? But, again, that's where they come back to the choice. Come on. You don't have to play college football. Huh? 
You don't have to play college football. So you sit out for three years? You're going to sit out for three years. So, but let me ask you this. How many jerseys do you think Clemson's going to sell with Trevor Lawrence's number on it? Now, I know they own the number. They don't own his name. But you know, they wouldn't sell that jersey if he hadn't been wearing it. So they've got three years to sell jerseys with his number on them. I- I'm going to say conservatively, 200000 at at 60 bucks a piece. Right? Yeah. That's 12, mil- $12 million dollars. In jerseys with Trevor Lawrence's number on it, and he gets how much of that? Wait, how much again? Oh wait, zero. Zero. That's not right. That's not right. So he gets a hundred and fifty thousand dollars education, which, by the way, he probably could have gotten in scholarships anyway because he was a top-notch student when he was in high school. So, he gets nada, and Clemson gets $12 million on a jersey that costs them $5 to produce because they make it in China. So, um, they make actually, $10 million, he makes actually, nada. Wholesale, and that's NFL... Uh, wholesale, the jerseys run between twenty-five and forty-six dollars, depending on how much they buy. But that's obviously. wholesale. That's wholesale. So that's what they're paying. So if they're paying, if charging right. sixty-seven dollars for the jersey, conservatively, you know, it's okay. So they make half. They make eight million. So my yeah. my point is. They're making a lot, and he's making nothing. Yeah. And that's not right. I mean, I, I well, think he could solve this. I think he could solve this problem say, very quickly because. But because when you say he's making he's nothing, nothing it, it, he's get a pla- He gets a platform. He gets coaching. He has training facilities. He has the top level, you know, doctors and train uh, staff and and tools and chiropractors and. You know, I mean, I don't know if you've ever went to the chiropractor. I mean, even do, do you do you work do you work for the NCAA? Are, are you the I'm NCAA just saying, hack now? Is that what no, you're I'm doing? just saying it's it, it's not free. It's no. you know it, it's it, it's they it's not it's not that they don't get anything. He does get they get a lot. He does get some benefit. I can yeah, tell but, you, but as a, Trevor Lawrence, as a as a D one JUCO yeah. player. I mean, we got shoes, we got clothes. Every road trip, we got money for food and oh, yeah. food. I, you know, know. I, I, I mean, I, it's I not a, like... I was a play-by-play guy. And I was a walk-on. Yeah. And I was a walk-on, so it wasn't but, wasn't but, even like, you know... But if Trevor Lawrence but if, but if Trevor Lawrence was allowed to declare for this year's draft, he'd be a first-round draft pick. With forty million guaranteed, and he can't even benefit from forty from shirt sales. Are you sure? I don't think they get forty million. Something for like that. It's like twenty six, twenty two to twenty six. Okay, okay twenty six. So, okay. A that, lot I think he's gonna get I think that's what Goff got. Goff was picture. the first overall pick. He got twenty six. By the time you get into the okay. second round, I so, think it goes down to around. Uh, a couple million dollars, yeah, but, two but, to five million, yeah, but and then the signing bonus kind of falls it, way it, off. It's it's safe to it's safe to say that if Trevor Lawrence was available for this draft, he'd be the overall number one pick. No, he would. Maybe he's got to wait two years. If Trevor, maybe okay, he, he might be the be. third pick. He'd be top five guaranteed, depending he'd on who's number five. one. He'd make a okay. He'd make a crap load of money. Yeah, he'd be but a top he's not five making. 
Okay, because depending on who's the yeah. top pick, if they have a quarterback already, whatever. <laughs> but the kid, the kid would go really high. Okay, um, and and hey, Trevor Lawrence, man, let me tell years. you. Two more years. Uh, and so, it? you know, my my point is that you know, it, it's listen. I'm not, I'm not saying to pay them. I'm not saying to put them on salary, but I will say that if, if their likeness can generate or their you know ability can generate sales of a jersey, give them a piece of it. I mean, why not? I mean, what's what's the harm in that? I mean, they're already quasi professionals as it is. I mean, I mean right? What? Okay, let me put it. Gonna go to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this real simple. The way that you can, right now, legally, pay college athletes. Here's the way. You put it in an irrevocable trust. There you go. Yeah, whatever it is. You can do that right now. That today. Stop today. But, but, but they're not. But they don't. Right? Right. They don't. Because why not let them benefit from their? I mean, I mean, listen. If you if you can just give them a give them a twenty percent cut and put it in trust, because if he if he gets if he gets pounded his his junior year and can never play football again, he's got nothing. Uh, I actually I think if he gets injured, I think it's like twelve million dollars or something like that. Eight million. Well, he, I mean, no, that's Zion, insurance policy. See, yeah, Zion Williams. Like if he doesn't go in the top, I think it's the top five picks, or top eight picks in the draft. If Zion Williams falls below pick eight, he gets $8 million. By, by the way, we should bring your um, your sports attorney, uh, our guest on next week, to talk about the Zion Williamson issue. Because that's a, that's a complicated issue. With the shoes and the you know, all that kind of stuff, oh uh, yeah, um, yeah. I'd love to. I'd love Nike. to have a conversation about that, right? Nike is in a position because, like, they're yes, they're so, kind of Nike's in a tough spot. Uh, we got to yeah. give him a lot of money because <laughs> of his prospect, and yeah. you know that his shoe blowing out may we may look back at this in a decade and be like, that's the best thing that ever happened to him. His career, you know. Yeah, I mean, we we'll want to see. I mean, but but but, but you know, I'd, I'd love to have I'd love to have um our our legal analyst on because I mean, Zion still isn't on the court. I mean, I'm not sure what the extent of his injury is, and and you know, listen, Shashevsky can hold him out for you know several games and not impact their their NCAA, you know, deal because you know, he may he may just be holding him out just to be careful, which is just fine, right? I mean, they lost tonight. Um, obviously, R.J. Baird and, and uh, Cam Reddish aren't aren't enough to beat Virginia Tech. I mean, discount your really? Hokies, why don't you? What's that? Just discount your Hokies. Well, no, Virginia I mean, Tech I mean, is a scrappy team. team. I mean, that's the thing. They're I mean, a tough yeah, team because yeah, they're, they're very scrappy. 10, you know, they were, they were they were top ten before. I mean, I mean, you know, the, the Tech lost to our, our own player. I mean, we lost, you know, our Justin Robinson. But I'm just saying that that the Tech doesn't have the blue chip talent that Duke does, and Duke couldn't beat Tech tonight. So without Zion Williamson. Well, hold I mean, on, hold on. There's Duke, no, there, there's Duke no way. could be Tech. They just didn't do that tonight. Um. Yeah, and and I was I was actually telling my wife tonight that that and, and you know you know when you're rooting for your own team, you're always you're always kind of um, pessimistic. Um, but you know, this is a bad matchup for Duke because. Virginia Tech the, is the best three-point defending team in the ACC 
and Duke's the worst shooting three-point team in the ACC. So it was a bad matchup for Duke, e- even with Diane Williamson. And, and by the way, uh, Tech's beaten Duke on this exact night, February 26th. This is their fourth time in the last seven years they've beaten them on this exact day. Uh, <laughs> so it was, it was like the stars aligned. But, you know, you're right. I mean, Tech's a good team. I mean, you Tech's the top three-point shooting team in the ACC. Um, and so, you know, as a fan, you tend to kind of discount, you know, the, the, your own team going, oh, well, what was me? But, wow. And, and without our best player, without our point card. And so, you know, Virginia Tech looked really good tonight. Uh, Duke looked, it, you know, Virginia Tech's the best, de- it's the second best defensive team in the ACC behind Virginia. I mean, you can't score on them. I mean, you don't score a lot of points on them. And so it was a great game. It was a great game. But my, my point is, though, that, that, you know, Zion, I mean, if, if Duke doesn't get Zion Williamson back, um, you know, and, and, and if that impacts Zion Williamson's draft slot, you know, Nike, Nike might, might have some liability in this. And I'd love to talk to our, what's his name, our, our legal guy that comes on now and then. Derek Kelly. I'd love to hear about that. Yeah, because does, you, is, is Nike, does Nike have some liability? Does Duke have any liability? Because Mike Krzyzewski signed the deal that, that said you got to wear these shoes. I mean, this this could be a really complicated issue if, in fact, the shoe blowout caused the knee injury, which yeah, I'm sure Nike it. would would say, well, no, maybe the knee injury caused the, you know, right? You know, yeah. So it, I mean, it's how often, be interesting to see. Right? I mean, I mean, I've seen people blow out shoes before, but they weren't brand new shoes, you know? Does that, well, I wonder what this does for Nike's branding and stuff, because... We're talking about shoes that are guaranteed one hundred and some dollars a pop, maybe up to five hundred dollars. Well, their stock pending. Well, their what stock they dropped a, a, a percentage and a half the next day. Nike stock dropped one and a half percent the day after the injury. So, I mean, I, I don't know if that was in anticipation of some kind of lawsuit or just. I mean, listen. And by the way, you and yeah, I... The stock market's we, fickle. We both played a That's lot of why. sports growing up. Listen, Nike's never been known for the quality of their product. Yeah. They're, they're a marketing company yeah. that, sells, that sells shoes. Yeah, they're a PR right? company. Yeah, they're a PR so, company that... Yes. That, that sells... That sells apparel. shoes. Yeah, apparel. Yes, shoes and apparel. And so, from a quality perspective, when I was a kid... If you wanted to buy a really good pair of shoes, you bought Converse. That that was back you know, a long time ago, but um, uh, and then after that, you bought Adidas or Puma. You didn't buy Nike for the quality of the product. You know, Nike's faced a lot of issues over the years with their manufacturing and all that kind of stuff. Well, and so this Adidas kind of, and this, Puma, you know, could kind of if I'm that correct, out. are both German companies, uh, are they not? Yeah, Puma's good. Yeah, yeah. I, I I wear Adidas golf shoes. Just you know. Oh, I wear Foot Joy. Give me some endorsement. Give give me an endorsement contract. I, I wear Adidas golf shoes. You know, I'll, I'm op- open to endorsement deal from Adidas. Yeah. Um, I'm 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 but, almost uh, in, open yeah, to uh, endorsements from anybody. If you send me stuff, yeah. Yeah. I will tell people about it. <laughs> That's pretty much how I work, you know. Well, I sent you. Well, I sent you. I sent you my books, and you. I know, and that was like you, that was like the five years ago. You know. My God, has it been that long? Yes, it has. That's been yeah. Oh my gosh. You know, we this yeah. show has been going. I was yeah. I was going back and looking at the show. So the sh- first show was. October 23rd, 2012. That was my first show. Okay. It'll be seven years in October. Seven years of doing this show. You've been doing it, I think, for almost five. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I came on in 2014, I believe. Yeah. 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 I, I sent you the books, and you were like, oh, you've got a thing about a, a Nebraska Kansas game yeah. in there, and it was real, and you were there. Yeah, so, yeah, so, um, yeah, so I'll take, but, you know, but my, my point is that, you know, Nike has always been susceptible to, to product liability issues because their shoes aren't that great. I mean, from a, from a, you know, from a quality perspective. And so they're, they're facing some issues with this. So now, now, I've been led to believe from everything that I've looked at and heard is that Zion Williamson's knee injury is not that serious. But they're just they're just yeah. being cautious. I concur with that. Okay, um, and and you know they could absorb a loss to Virginia Tech tonight. Say, listen, the regular season doesn't matter much in in NCAA in in NCAA basketball. I mean, well, okay, so he so played a red shirt the other night the from a kid to put him in the game. Yeah, I know, I know. They fell out of they fell out of first place in the ACC tonight, but they're still going to get a double buy in the tournament. And, and who cares about the tournament? I mean. And, you know, uh, what they care about is the NCAA tournament. And so they'll have Zion back. So you know, I, I, I believe that this is going to be a, a rather minor incident, probably a footnote in history. We'll probably remember it. You know, oh, wow, that was a really weird shoe blowout. But I'd still like to hear the perspective of our legal guy to, to see what, you know, what his take on is, is if, in, if, in fact, this injury lingers and it doesn't, in fact, impact his draft status, you know, where the, where the, where the implications are for that. Because Sports Illustrated ran a really great article last week, by the way, about this. Um, and I'd like to hear from our guest next week about what, you know, what, what could really happen here. I mean, because the Sports Illustrated article was written from, as a, from a journalist. It wasn't written by a, by a, a legal expert. It was written by, you know, a writer. And I'd like to hear something from, from uh, more of a, a legal perspective that says, you know, what, what could really happen, uh, what's likely to happen, you know, what, you know, what could they really maintain, um, you know, that kind of thing. I think it would be very interesting to hear that. I think you've got an issue uh, I didn't I get. I don't think it's going to come. I didn't, I didn't see that article. Is it the one with the the Sixers on the front? I'll forward it to you. I, I get okay. it. I get it. I, okay. I get it online. I'll forward oh, okay. it to you. I have the I have the physical version. It's in, like literally in my hand. I'm like, what page is that on? No, this was. <laughs> no, this wasn't in the physical version. This was. I get both. Oh, okay. okay. And, and I'll, for, I'll forward it to you because it was it was on the it was a it was a digital version. Okay. I'll forward it to you. So great. It was a great piece. Okay, you yeah, after the the, the um, yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you. Um, but it was it was a great piece, and and so um, and my brother in law is an attorney. Okay, so I sent it to him because he was like, because as soon as it happened, he said to my sister, "Oh my gosh, Nike's gonna Nike's in trouble, right?" Because he's an attorney, <laughs> and so I sent it to him. He was like, "Oh, it's a great piece." <laughs> So he was all over, so I'll send it to you. But yeah, it, 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 we'll see. I mean, it, it's not going to impact the, on the court stuff, but, um, you know, who knows? I mean, it, it, it's crazy. What I mean, that was, I mean, I've been watching sports for, good gosh, 55 of my 60 years. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that. I was watching that game. I don't usually watch, I don't, I don't watch a lot of college basketball except for my team. Or yeah. teams, yeah. Virginia Tech and Arkansas, but of course you got to watch that game. I mean, that North Carolina Duke, and, and I think I wrote a piece on this, uh, uh, put it on our site last year. I mean, these teams virtually have been at, at, a, at a, a a standstill uh, between them. And it's not just the number of games won; it's the number of points scored. They're, they've like scored within three points of each other. Until last until last week, the last fifty years, it's been incredible. It's been ridiculous. And then Zion blows out his shoe, you know, right off the right off the deal. Um, so that's why I was watching. But um, you know, you can't 
if, if Zion comes back, I mean, uh, Duke's a team to beat. Kentucky's great. Carolina's good. Uh, Gonzaga's good. Uh, Michigan State's really good. Um, but, you know, it, it, when you get to the tournament, you just never know. I mean, last year, number one seed, Virginia, loses in the first round. I mean, who would have predicted that? I mean, you know, and Virginia's really good. Yeah, so you got top five or six teams that are that are that are terrific. And then you got that the other teams like the Tennessees and the Virginia Techs and uh, yeah, Virginia Tech beating Duke tonight. That was a that, that was stellar. That that elevates Virginia Tech probably potentially into a number four seed, which would be crazy. Um, you know, um, get Kansas State and Texas Techs and. You know, some others, and the SEC is kind of a kind of a interesting mix. You've got a bunch of bubble yeah. teams in the SEC: it, Mississippi State and South Carolina and Texas A&M. You got a bunch of them that that. And, and by the way, it, it, when I it did my analysis, my initial um, bracket analysis last week. There are very few. Um, mid-conference teams that are good. And so you're going to see a, an inordinate number of Power 6 teams make the, play, make the tournament this year. Because very few of the other conferences have multiple teams coming in. So you're going to yeah. see a lot. I mean, how many? Right, because the ACC's I mean, probably got think- nine or ten teams getting in. Usually, like, the, the Big Ten has, like, a third... And the ACC has like a third, you know, of the team that seems like it makes in. Yeah, you, you're going to see it, it more than that because the, 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 the other conferences don't have much going on. Um, now, because, well, okay, take that back. In the uh, Houston, it's ranked like ninth or tenth in the country. If they lose the tournament, they're they're still getting in, but they're probably not going to lose the tournament. Same with Buffalo and the MAC. You know, you, you may have you have to look at some of those upsets because you do have a few of the teams like Wofford in, in the Southern Conference. They're getting in no matter what, and so you know if they lose in the in the tournament, you know that another team. But they're they're so much better than anybody else in their conference. They're probably gonna, they're not probably not going to lose. But you don't have a lot of, you know, the, the, the A-10 with, in, in years past, you'd have Dayton and VCU and some other teams. They're getting one team in. That's it. That, whoever wins the tournament gets in. That's it. And so you're, that's going to open the door for a lot of Power 6 teams to, to get in. Um, so the SEC may get another an extra team in. The ACC is going to get tons of teams in. Um, the Big Ten's going to get a bunch of teams in. The Pac-12 is going to get nobody in. I mean, they're going to get like two teams in, maybe. Which, and that's the other reason you're going to see a lot of other Pac, uh, Power Six teams get in, because the Pac-12 is going to get shut out. I mean, they're going to get two teams in. And you know, in the past, they get like six or four yeah. or five. And so it's going to open the door for a ton. And a ton more teams to get in. So Nebraska yeah. lost like, like right at the first of the year. They uh, they lost the Michigan State, Rutgers, Ohio State, Wisconsin, Illinois, Maryland, again, Purdue, all like consecutively. Like they've only won two of their last four games, and they lost the was that. Seven, seven consecutive games. So they've won two. So since what day is the same? And they're not a bad team. They're not. And this but, thing but is, the Big Ten. It's Big Ten tough. It is the Big tough. Ten's tough. I mean, they came into the game against um, Michigan State. Michigan State was ranked sixth. Nebraska was thirteen and five. 
That was a record. And they, from that game on, they lost seven straight. They've only won two games. They're 15 and 13 right now. They're barely over 500. And they got three games left in the season. And they're pretty good. And they're pretty good. Yeah. And they're pretty good. I mean, you know, I mean, they're, they're, I mean, if they can finish out the season, they, they might make the NIT. And, and, they, and that's a good spot for Nebraska to be an NIT because they can, you know, get a couple more weeks of practice, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But, um, well, they finish uh, out against Michigan, Michigan State, and Iowa, all ranked teams. Like Purdue, they just lost to Purdue oh, by shoot. three. So, so the, I mean, it's not like well, they're. they're gonna be, then, it's not like they're consistently getting well, they're blown not, they're out. They're not getting in. They're not getting anywhere then, because because they're probably going to go zero and three against those three teams. Maybe yeah. maybe one and, if they could pull an upset, maybe one and two. But see, you know, they're, they're not. Yeah. For me, I was like, oh yay, they beat Creighton. So when they beat Creighton, and again when they beat Creighton this year, it was ninety four to seventy five. It wasn't even a close game at the end there. Uh, they they won handily, so I'm like, cool. Nebraska has it this year, and then you know, a few more games. Oh, they beat Oklahoma State pretty comfortably. The next the next game. Oh, Maryland beat them by two. Ain't no big deal. They play Iowa. Uh, Iowa beat them by okay. I'll beat them by a couple. You know, th- th- that was missed opportunities. Then they beat. Penn State, then they beat Indiana. Indiana was ranked, and they beat Indiana by like 15. And then they lose by six. That was six. a bad loss. That was that was a that was a bad loss for Indiana. That was a bad loss for Indiana. I mean, Indiana only scored 51 points in the game, you know. And Nebraska wasn't yeah, that even was shooting that well. Yeah, that was. They're, they weren't shooting very well either. Uh, Michigan State, they lost to Michigan State by six. You know, they lost to Rutgers by seven. They lose to Ohio State by ten. They lose to 11 to Wisconsin. Illinois beat them by six points, seven points. So they're all pretty close games, except for the last Maryland game. Last two, uh, Maryland and Purdue, Maryland won... 60 to 40. They could only scored 45 points. Purdue, 81 62. Uh, Those are bad losses. Is, is, is Nebraska a young team? I, I wouldn't necessarily say they're a young team. Um, they've had some well, because, turnover on their because roster. Because it's typical for. for it's, it's typical for a young team to struggle they got in February like, because they, they got. They're not used to. They're not used to playing. Thinking they're not like used to playing that much three. basketball, and, and they. they, well, they the best player is a senior. Out. You know yeah. what I mean? James Palmer Jr. He's he's the best player. He's a senior. Uh, Roby is a junior. You know, I guess they're really not that young of a team. It's 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 mostly okay. You know, juniors, seniors, sophomores. They don't have a whole lot of freshmen on the team. I'm I'm looking at it right now. They have one, two, three, four. They only have four freshmen on the team. So they they have no excuse. They're just playing badly. I mean, yeah. I'm just saying. It's just, and two, two of the freshmen are from Nebraska. <laughs> We're not really known for our basketball talent. Yeah. So, yeah. That's true. Well, you're not known for your football talent either at the moment. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, that now. was, I know, that was, that was, that was, that was harsh. That, that was, was harsh. low. That was harsh. That was low. You set. You teamed me up for that, dude. You teamed me up for it. I know. I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> I'll find out a way to bring up Old Dominion again. Just wait. Just wait. <laughs> oh man, I just. I, yeah, sorry. That that's just that's just trash talk among friends right there. That was that was that was harsh. I know, but you. Yeah. Uh, I did. I, I walked right into it. It was like that the you know the, the sliding the screen door. You, 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 you screen door me. Up, you're like my caddy. You walked up to the tee. You you put the ball on the tee. And you went there. You go. Just hit hit that. Right. Anyway. I literally walked right into the screen door on that one. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, where did this come from? <laughs> Speaking of, where did this come from? Are the Lakers trying to tank now, or what's the deal? You know, they go in a game no, under five hundred into the. You know, I, you know, we've been doing this. We've been doing this for a long time, and when I was finishing laughing on 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 Nebraska, my next thought was the Lakers. You went right there. I don't know, you know, but, and I watch the Lakers because I'm a Lakers fan, and I, I watch them. I actually watch games, and this is this is interesting. You know, you know me. I watch games, and a lot of our a lot of our peers in this industry don't watch games. They yeah. don't actually watch sports. They just comment on sports. And I watch the Lakers, and before LeBron went out with the injury. That was a really good basketball team. I mean, they were playing great. I mean, they had gone from five, and they were five and eight. And when he went out, they were eighteen and fourteen, or twenty and fourteen, or something like that. Yeah. He went out with the injury, uh, and they actually played pretty well without him. Okay, he went out with eighteen games. They went seven and eleven, I believe, without him. And then all that trade crap came up, okay? Um, and I don't know why they did that because that's a pretty good basketball team. I mean, they've got uh, uh, the, the, the big guy in the middle, Zuka. They had Kuzma, Ingram. Um, now, Lonzo Ball was out. Lonzo Ball went out with an injury. Still. And, and I know a lot of people talk about Lonzo Ball. They think about his dad. But the guy's a really good point guard. Um, oh, yeah. And, and that's a good basketball team. When they're all healthy, they're really good. And he's a good off-the-ball player, too. And then Le- he, as good as yeah, a distributor then, he is, LeBron he's decided, good off the ball. Yeah and, then, yeah, and then they decide to try to trade the whole team for Anthony Davis, which I think is stupidity to begin with retarded. because you're going to get one guy and you're going to trade away this guy. I mean, I think they should have just – just stuck with the program because they were a good basketball team. I mean, they beat, listen, they beat the Rockets uh, four days ago and then the Rockets went and beat the Warriors without, and they didn't have James Harden. So, the Lakers can play really well, but then they then they went and they, 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 they lost to the Pelicans and they lost, they lost to the Grizzlies last night, which was ridiculously bad. Um, you know, I think these young guys are just quitting on LeBron, going, "Screw you! I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to play for you. You tried to get me traded, and I'm just, I'm just, I'm not playing for you." And which is, I think, is, is, is unfortunate because it's a pretty good basketball team. Ingram, um, McGee, um, Kuzma, Hart. LeBron, uh, I mean, <laughs> it's a good, it's a good basketball team. Listen, I don't know why they, they tried to mess with things. But here, here's my problem. I think they just wanted drama. I mean, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. My biggest thing is, I look at the losses to the Phillies. The Phillies are all Phillies all over the place, man. They they have talent, but they're all over the place. And I see JJ Reddick. Trying to be the veteran guy there and keep things together, but there's so many egos and talent there that it's just it's like it's almost like street ball. I'm, I swear they it's so sporadic. I'm, it's it, it's it's what they do, but that's why they're not going to win the title because there's too many professionals in the league. There's too many teams that can go out there like. What the war? If you if you got the Warriors, the Warriors would sweep the Sixers in the finals. I think the Warriors is probably they'll probably sweep anybody in, in the in the finals. I, it doesn't matter who they could bring out of the East. You know, the best chance I think of winning is probably Boston. You know, winning a game. But outside of that, I I really don't have any faith out of any of the teams. However, I do think I do think because uh, JJ Reddick this offseason is an unrestricted free agent. 
I do think the Lakers should pick up J.J. Redick. Because he can shoot, he can still put the ball on the floor, and he has a lot of playoff experience, too. Not winning, but he, he's been there in the playoffs, so. Uh, I, I, listen, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big J.J. Redick fan, I mean, for a couple of reasons, and it's so kind of personal, number one. Uh, he went, he's from um, the high school right grew up in, in Roanoke, Virginia. Okay, his, huh. He went to Cave Spring High School in Roanoke, Virginia. I went to Cave Spring Elementary School and Cave Spring Middle School in, in Roanoke. So, got a connection to JJ. He went to high school with my nieces. And his sister did too. So, I've got a connection there. And I saw his last game at Duke. I was at the regional final regional semifinal, excuse me, in, in 2006. Duke lost LSU in the, in the regional, in regional semifinal. So, I've got a lot of connection with J.J. Reddick. And I think you're dead right. What the Lakers need is a shooter that won't cost them a lot of money. Right? By like 12 million. I mean, they can, go out, they can, get, they can get J.J. Reddick for, you know, by NBA money anyway, right? Yeah. A steal. Yeah. Twelve and a half. Right. Twelve, twelve and, and so, a half. Yeah. And Reddick and Reddick played for the Clippers, so it's not like he's I mean he's 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 played in LA. Yeah. So he just go back to LA. Yeah. Right. And so uh I think I think I think I think you're right. I think you're dead on. I mean they gotta go after some low low cost I mean, they've gotta get an outside shooter. And and J.J. Reddick's a great outside shooter. I mean, there's no question about that. And he can stand there and shoot all day long. And they're talking about Clay Thompson. I don't know if Clay Thompson would go there. Um, but J.J. Reddick, just the kind of guy they need. I mean, is he? Is he? So he's free after this year. Yep. He's freed up after this year with the with the with the with the Sixers. Unrestricted free agent. Yeah, I'd go there. I'd go there. I'd Ninety the seconds. Um, because that's what they lack. They lack a shooter. Now, Kuzma can get hot at times. Ingram can get hot at times. LeBron gets hot at times. But they don't have a guy that that is like you've got to. You have to guard this guy every time outside the outside the perimeter, right? And, and the Warriors have two of those guys. Sixty seconds. Right? Well, three. We can't even Durant, Durant knocks him down too. too. Yeah, so they've got Durant, Curry, and Thompson. I mean, you can't. You just cannot. You cannot. You know, drop your cover. So, but against against the Lakers as they're currently comprised. You can pack it in. You can just pack it in into the lane, and and you know they're 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 shooting so bad. You know, and Lonzo Ball is terrible. He can't hit free throws. I mean, you know. So, but they were you know the Lakers were playing very well before before LeBron got injured. I mean, they were they were they were starting to click. Ten they, seconds. They probably could have been a, 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 a three seed in the in the West if LeBron had stayed healthy. And now it's just it's just chaos. And then they're not going to make the playoffs. So, I mean, I, unless they they change course dramatically, which they which they could. I mean, LeBron has put teams on his back before, but he's thirty four years old, and in NBA years he's like thirty seven years old. You know, he's played. Two years of postseason games. That's how successful he's been. But he has played. He has played two, two full seasons of postseason games. So it's going to be tough. Very, very difficult for them to get there. And you know, and I'm, I'm not sure Magic Johnson has. And can they attract a free agent? And who wants to play with LeBron? I mean, this is. It's a difficult situation for, for the Lakers right now. I mean, they, they, they disenfranchised their young talent 
by putting them on the trading block and then not not getting the deal done with with um, Anthony Davis. <coughs> and, and so, and uh, then they've had Luke Walton uh, evidently the on the verge of getting fired. Like he's either going to get fired. And he's a great. By the way, and by the way, he's he's done a terrific job. I mean, he's a good coach. He's done a terrific job. Uh, and, and if I'm Luke Walton, I just go. I I basically go screw you. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go get a job somewhere else. Because, cause, you know, you know, if they're going to fire him, fine. He'll just go somewhere else. He did a great job. I mean, he held. Listen, the the last two times LeBron James was injured for stretches in his career, his teams failed to win a game. They went seven and eleven, or six and twelve, seven and eleven, something like that. His his teams didn't win a game when he was out. So, I mean, that's a coaching thing to me. I mean, these guys, these kids should be happy. Should be, you know, it's a it's a train wreck. And so, listen, you know, I think LeBron's probably the greatest player ever, right? the best. Best basketball player. I mean, nobody will ever give up the Michael Jordan crap. I've seen them both play. I mean, come on, get over it. But he's not. He hasn't managed his career very well. I'll give. I'll, I'll give him that. I'll, I'll. I'll. I'll give his critics that. And this is a perfect example. Yeah. He's totally messed us up because, well, because because he, you know, he owns. He owns the agency that represents Antonio Davis. Antonio Davis. So and, he's conflicted and, and Draymond Green. He's conflicted. Draymond Green. Yes. Yeah, he's conflicted here. Okay, so he can't dodge the the criticism. I mean, he's manufactured this. He's created this issue with his own team. So, you know, he's still, he can't go, oh, well, you guys got to buy in. Well, he just almost sold us out. You know, it's, it's, his, it's his creation. You know, it is. Well, I'm like, listen, I have tremendous respect for, for LeBron James. His ability, what he's done, what he's overcome, all of that. It's it's amazing to me. And 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 it it it, 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 it exasperates me that he doesn't get more respect than he does. Because he deserves more more respect than, than than he than he gets. But this one this one's on him. He screwed this up. He did. Yeah, I mean, he's not making the playoffs. <laughs> okay, I think they will. We're, uh, uh, well, the 20, Spurs are the Spurs are in the middle, midst of a mess. Okay. There's 22 games left, so they got 22 so games left, and they actually have the fourth hardest ending, you know, schedule the Lakers do. But that actually plays into their favor because they play better against good teams. So they're losing to bad teams and okay. beating good teams. So they're the fourth toughest roster if you go by, you know, the logic behind this. They play better against better competition. The Spurs are in the process of melting down and imploding. And can you really count on Sacramento or Minnesota to actually keep fighting and making the playoffs? I don't think so. I think they could end up probably a seven seed, a six seed if they if they really figure out how so, to play like they did at the beginning of the season. So it's February twenty sixth. You said the Lakers make it into the playoffs. Yeah, it's like a seven. It's a seven seed. seed. Yeah. I just heard you say seven. Yeah, seed. I think they make it as a seven seed. I said he don't make the playoffs, even though I wasn't. 
I want them to because I'm a, I'm a Lakers fan. Yeah. So we're, we have a line here. So, so uh, we got we got to make this kind of a you know a little bit of a cold hard truth on sports bet thing. So, what what are you going to give up if if they if I if if they don't make the playoffs? What do I give up if they if they do? I mean, I, we got to do something here, man. I'll tell you what. If if they don't make the playoffs, I'll let you pay pay all the bills for the show and the site. How about that? Ooh, I don't know what those are, though. I don't know what those are. That's, uh, that's kind of blind. Yeah. <laughs> Including travel expenses. Ooh. Including travel. What <laughs> travel? I don't know. This time of year, you're lucky. There's no travel this time of year. From my stu- home studio to my bed. That's, there you go. It's travel. That's uh, show travel right there. I guess we're just going to do this for pride. So I, I, uh, I, I just, I'm not sure I see a path to the playoffs for the for the Lakers. That's all I'm saying. It's just, it's, and, and and I agree. They they play better against the better teams. Like they beat the Rockets two games ago, and then then they then they drop. Then they lose to the Pelicans without Anthony Davis. Well, look at they, And then they lose to the Grizzlies. They beat Houston. They beat Boston. Uh, yeah. I'm look, they beat Oklahoma City. They beat... Who else is in the playoffs that they beat? Um... Yeah, well, well they're, they're, they're on 500 teams, so they've beat half the good teams, you know. Uh, they pretty much have split with most of these teams. Atlanta has actually played well against them, but I think Atlanta's played well against LeBron in general. They beat Atlanta earlier in the year, back in November, by a point. Yeah, it's just been. I mean, that, December second. I don't know. The Lakers are they're kind of a train wreck. They've been. They didn't manage to. You know, it it, it doesn't look like that tough of a, a schedule. I mean, you got the Pelicans, the Bucks, all right? The Bucks are in LA. So, you got yeah. one guy to deal with. Let him go. Do, with the, the way the way that you beat the Bucks is you just let the Greek freak go nuts and shut down everybody else. The problem is, is LeBron James decides that he's not going to play defense. I don't know, like last night in the fourth quarter when the game was close, and he just lets the guy shoot a three, doesn't put a hand up or nothing. It looks like they were in just in warm-ups. You know, and then he starts looking around like somebody else's fault. What are you doing, Brian? Put your hand up, man. You know, he, yeah, but that's, he's been... Yeah. You know, the thing is, so I was, I was, I looked into this, and, because I heard, it was uh, one of the Brazilian shows I listened to. So, LeBron... Took a night off the other night because it was player weight, you know, whatever distribu- distribution or overload or whatever it was. He took a night off, right? So because he can. But the thing is, the night before he was like recording part of a documentary and a rap album with two chains. And they, and then the next the, the next night he's off. He doesn't he doesn't play the next night. So it's it's just like I don't feel like the Lakers are getting LeBron. Really, you know. And I don't think LeBron is into L.A. and getting a title in L.A. like Kobe was. Kobe's mistake is he took too much money. 
so they couldn't get other people because the cap wasn't high enough then. That was his fatal mistake. But he already had five titles. You know? Right, right. So, LeBron's thing is, he, he's kind of, they kind of fell into the situation where it's almost like, do you ever, do you ever buy assembled furniture? F- furniture you got to assemble yourself? You know? You, you, yeah. Or something you got to, you know, yes. you look at it and you're like, oh, yeah, I got that. And you end up having more parts afterwards. And it doesn't look stable. Or you run out of parts midway through. Like, where was this piece at? Like, what does this do? You know? Um, that's kind of what they did. They LeBron was... They figured they assembled their self furniture and they're good. You know? Some Ikea stuff. Some stuff they get at Walmart. And... Uh, and obviously it wasn't the case. Even though they have a, a plethora of talent there. You know? I think I think Magic and Genie are giving LeBron a long, long leash. Do whatever he feels he needs to do because it brought star power. I think the Lakers were just desperate. And they figured if LeBron comes, we'll get people. And that may be true. Maybe they do get other people. But I think, I almost feel like getting LeBron was almost as desperate as putting up billboards for Dwight Howard. Um, not as. There was nothing more pathetic in, 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 than that. But still, getting him, I think they, they, they really felt that they were going to get LeBron. And I think LeBron at this stage in his life, you know, directing documentaries, doing, you know, TV shows, he's acting, he has a, a movie, uh, Space Jam 2, that's going to come out next year, um, this time next year, you know, it, it, it's, he has his Blaze Pizza, he, all kinds of stuff going on, and, and it doesn't seem that he's putting what the Lakers need into the Lakers, you know? I mean, and, well, and we can't yeah, say, and we can't I, even say LeBron I, is I, is a late in his career player because they got Wilt, they got you know, they got um, Kareem, but they were late in their career still, and they came in and balled out and they did their thing, you know. Yeah, but 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 to his credit, and and, and unfortunately. If he doesn't go down with that groin injury, and they don't lose lots of ball, I mean, think about this a second. This is basketball. And, and Rondo got injured. You don't, this isn't football. You don't expect that many injuries to happen on your, on your basketball team. Yeah. If, if LeBron doesn't go down on Christmas Day, and Rondo doesn't go down, a week before that, and Lonzo Ball is not done a week after that. This is a 50-win basketball team. I mean, they're, they're probably the number three seed. Maybe the two seed. And, and even if they're not the two seed, Denver's an imposter in the West. They're going to get taken down the playoffs. So, I mean, I, I just think, I, I think that the Lakers kind of panic. Because... <laughs> They don't need, I mean, Anthony Davis, in this day and age, with what with, with the Lakers already had, why not just stick with what you had? I mean, they had a good basketball team. They were, they were fourth in the West when LeBron went down, and they, and they were trending up. I mean, it, you know, so I think, they, I think they shot themselves in the foot from a panic perspective. And, and try and, and they turned off the team because you, you put them all on the block. You went, oh, we got to get rid of all of you. And and listen, Ingram and Kuzma and McGee. Listen, Steve, I watch I watch all the Lakers games. They're really good. 
they are really good. And I think they just kind of you know, panicked. I mean, if you, if you trade four of your best guys, you bring Anthony Davidson, who else is going to play? You, you, can't, you can't just have LeBron and Anthony Davis play catch. I mean, I mean as good as Anthony Davis is, you've got to have other guys around. I mean, I mean if you're going to get what they want to get, which is a title, Right, I mean, they're not talking about you know winning a playoff series or two. They're talking about getting the title. So, um, yeah, we'll have to see. But I, I'm frustrated as a Lakers fan for, for you know to an extent. But but you know it, it's all because of injury. I mean, the team is good, but you know, and and Lonzo Ball, I know. Doesn't shoot free throws very well. He's not an outside shooter. But I'll tell you something. That guy, that guy makes things happen. When you, and, and that's why a lot of people don't watch it. They, they don't watch the game. And you know me. I watch a lot of games. I watch all the football games. I watch all the basketball games. I watch the game. Watch the game. Watch the players. Lots of balls are really good point club. He's outstanding. He makes things happen. And, and when he went down, and and LeBron went down, and you know Rondo was out. I mean, it, and they and you know they're still in contention. I mean, I think Lonzo Ball is supposed to come back. I think pretty soon. I think you know. So we'll see. I mean, I I'd like to agree with you, Matthew, that they were going to make the playoffs. I mean, I'd, I'd like to say yes, they're going to make the playoffs. I'd love to say that, but. Talent-wise, I think they have it, but but you can't lose to the Grizzlies. I mean, come on. You can't lose to the Grizzlies. You shouldn't. At very least, you so, shouldn't lose to the Grizzlies. I mean, I mean, I know it, it's in Memphis. It's on the road, and, you know, yada, yada, yada. yada. But, you, but, but because of the, the strength of their schedule, you can't lose. You, it, it, that puts them in a very precarious situation. They, they've got to... They've got to win some games they're not supposed to win coming down the stretch. Now, they've beaten the Warriors. They've beaten the Rockets. They've beaten, you know, good teams. They've got the Pelicans at home. I think it's Friday night, I believe. you got to win that game, right? I mean, it's getting to the point where they've got to win everything at home and pull off a couple upsets on the road. But we'll, we'll see. I'd love to see them make the playoffs. And it, if they make the playoffs, they're going to be a if they're an eight seed, they're going to play the Warriors. Well, they could play the Nuggets because the Warriors are kind of lethargic. I mean, this could be an interesting, you know, course of events for, for that. But you know, I, I hope they make it. I hope they do. I just, the, the team I've watched the last couple of games doesn't look like they're capable of, you know, because they're three games behind eighth place. I mean, they, they've got a, They've got to go on a uh, a crazy run. Uh, they've got three teams to they're eleven. They've got to jump over three teams. I mean, that's, well, you know, that's they're fortunate. You know, that's the reality of the teams, situation. You know, a few of the teams are, you know, the Suns uh, over the next few games. Uh, New Orleans they play twice. Phoenix they play once. <laughs> Um, New York is terrible. They're trying to tank. Brooklyn, we just assume that every year they're trying to tank. You know, Charlotte's not in a the good Nets way. The Nets are pretty good, though. No, the Nets. The Nets, Nets are pretty good. They play hard. The Nets are. The Nets are pretty good. But yeah, the, the Knicks. The Knicks suck. I mean, the yeah. Suns suck. I mean, yeah, I, I got you. I mean, they, they've also got some tough games against teams in the West. Yeah, because they got, you know, got the they got Milwaukee twice. They've got uh, New Orleans twice, which should be two wins. They got Detroit from the East. They got Toronto, Chicago, Boston. So they go on a road trip March. So March. Yeah, this is going to be pretty tough. So tomorrow they play. Mm-hmm. They play at home against 
the Pelicans, and then on March 1st, they got at home against the Bucks. Then they go, you know, it's an hour flight. It's a short flight to Phoenix on the 2nd. Then they're back in L.A. against the Clippers. Uh, they have the Clippers, Denver, and Boston. You know, three potential, three playoff teams at home. Then they go on the road to Chicago, Toronto, Detroit, New York, and Milwaukee. That's over the course the of seven but, days. But but the Clippers are playing on the on, but the Clippers are playing on our home court too. So that's not really a road. It's not yeah, really yeah, a road the Lakers game. always play for the Clippers. Yeah, they play. They but play the Lakers good and the Clippers play in the same arena. They, they both play in Staples, so yeah. yeah, they just switch locker rooms, whatever. But. Oh, actually, I don't think they do. Actually, they keep their locker rooms. I think there's actually yeah, they four. Don't. Yeah. What I mean, it's a, they just yeah they yeah. just they just have their they just it's it's they yeah, change the colors. A, One has that's not a road. Yeah. That's not really it. a it's not really a road game for the Clippers, but no, no, I get your point. I mean, I mean they've got but but they've got to win the games that they that they're supposed to win. They they can't lose to the Grizzlies again. I mean, they yeah. can't lose to a team like that. Well, yeah, actually, that they let get away. it is actually they, impossible for them to lose to the Grizzlies again because they don't play them. So that's right. a highlight. And, and they lost, but they lost, and they lost, to the, and they lost to the Pelicans. Who they played two more times. And the Pelicans didn't have didn't, didn't have Anthony Davis, and they may not. You can't you can't be losing games like that. You can't be losing games like that. So. I'm just, I'm, I'm a little discouraged because before the All Star break, they actually looked they were they were playing better, and then they came out and they beat the Horn, they beat the, the Rockets in the first game. I'm like, oh, they're, they're they're okay, they're good. Then they go and stub their toe against the Pelicans without Anthony Davis, and they lose to the Grizzlies. It's like, oh my gosh! I almost went to that game because I can drive to Memphis from here. Um, I couldn't get a ticket. Listen. Lakers tickets are impossible to get now. Two years ago, last year, I went um, to see the Lakers play Oklahoma City in, in Oklahoma City. <laughs> I got a discounted ticket. You know, it was just the Lakers without anybody famous. But Lonzo Ball played that game, and I got a club seat ticket for one hundred nineteen dollars, which included nice uh, pregame and halftime buffets. Yeah. This year, I tried to get the same ticket. It was three. It was two hundred and thirty-nine dollars. Because LeBron, because they had LeBron. But there's a buffet. Like me. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. I didn't realize it. I didn't realize it. I was like, oh, it's pre-game and halftime buffet, and and um, there was a bar. Just for the people in that section, it was it was crazy. Was it included? Dollars for the ticket, drinks were included. Well, I had to pay for my. I had to oh. pay for the drink. I had to pay for the alcohol. But but the buffet and the, the seat and you know it was it was like it's like the civil club section up in the in the end zone of the um, Oklahoma City uh, Thunder Arena. Uh, it's fantastic. I tried to get the same ticket. For the Lakers game this year, it was like it's like three times as much. I went, oh, that's not happening because it was because it's a lot. It's like it's like going to a golf tournament with Tiger Woods, right? It's like oh, when Tiger's not there, it's easy to get you know, but when Tiger's there, it's impossible. You know, so it's so the, the 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 LeBron factor, which is good. I like listen. I think LeBron's fantastic. He's done a lot of good things for the game. Um, well, the, I, 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 we'll have to see. Well, here's the thing. The benefit you say that I think they're going to get a seventh seat because the teams that are left in their schedule, most of the teams are playoff teams. So, you know, if, you know, you like to end the season is, is Portland, Utah, Clippers, Golden State, Oklahoma City, and those are right now all five of them are playoff teams. 
New Orleans is not. Charlotte is not. And then they got Utah twice. Uh, Sacramento is just ahead of them. I mean, the Lakers, how many games are they behind Utah? I mean, they're five and a half games behind Utah. Two games? Five and a half. Oh. Yeah, yeah, because Utah is nine and a half games out of the lead, and the Lakers are 14. I mean, five and a half. So they're five and a half. They're six games behind Houston. You see? It's Houston. So it's six games. They have 22 games left on the schedule. And see, that's the thing is people say, oh, they got the fourth toughest schedule in the season left. And people say, you know, it's a bad thing. That sounds like a, the perfect recipe to make the playoffs because you're beating teams that are in the playoffs. You know? You gain a full game. Yeah, but they're right now they're, they're three games behind the Spurs who are in, in eighth place. Um, two in the loss column. I mean, and the Spurs aren't playing well. Okay? Uh, nor are the Lakers, but yeah, I yeah. listen. I think the roster is good enough to, to get to the playoffs. The question is, can they play up to the roster level? Because the Bronze just totally disenfranchised the team. I mean, it's true. And if I called you up one day and said, "Hey, hey, Matthew." Um, Love doing the show with you, but um, I just bought the rights, and I- I'm thinking of you know sending you off to another network. <laughs> You're like what? I'm like, yeah, but let's do let's do a really good show tomorrow what's, night. Let's, what's let's the day really, like? Let's really go do it. <laughs> well, You're shipping me off. What's the pay like? No, it's kidding. like I like it here. Yeah, no. but, but you know, but, but and, then, and then I and then I say to you. Oh, but let's let's really kill it tomorrow night on a really good show. And you're like, yeah, that's. Yeah, but, but, you're, but that's it, I, I what wait what are you and, and that's that's the deal. That's what's happening here. I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not faulting anybody. <clears throat> LeBron wants to get a, a good team around him, and you know, the kids want to play. It just it just really. I think it's been it's been mismanaged. It's been mismanaged in L.A. And I'm not, I'm not pointing to at anybody. I'm just saying well, that, that the thing. It's, it's not conducive so, to making the playoffs. What I understood I, I, is yeah. I have a source that told me that New Orleans never at any point in time had any intention to actually trade Anthony Davis. They were oh, just I, 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 literally I just trolling right. the Lakers. And then they leaked out how well, desperate they were to get Anthony Davis. Well, Rich Paul, but, but Rich Paul, the agent for Anthony Davis, who, by the way, works for LeBron James, right? Yeah. Is the guy that leaked out that, that they were looking to entertain offers for his client. He, he's the one... He's the one that, that screwed the pooch in. Well, you can look at that but kind I mean, of two ways. Why do you now, do that? He let them know but why do you that do he's that? not going to renew his contract. That gave them, he, he let them know in the season, like he gave them 10 days before the trade line and said, you know, I'm yeah, not going to renew but, but, right. my contract. But he's a, but he's a year and a but, but, but he. He still has a year and a half of that. Because that gave him, that gave the team an opportunity to actually get something in return. Yeah, but but if you're if you're if you're New Orleans, they're not got a year and a half to do that. Or yeah, another, it's a year and a half. Another half a season. But right? now they know for the next year and a half, that it's not going to be any issue trading Day Anthony Davis. That's why I thought. Yeah, them but, trying to make the trade happen on either side by the trade deadline this year was stupid. 
Like, okay, so... So I agree with you. You give away that's your agreement. yes. That's because agreement. when I yeah. when I saw that and I was yeah. like, this is like this is the worst trade ever. Yeah. Like the they just gave away yeah. their whole team. Yeah, nobody. Every everybody like yeah, literally. Nobody how do you that. trade eight people for one guy? Like your entire lineup and half of your bench for one guy. You have to literally go acquire new players from somewhere. The G League, from you know, you got to go. Were well, you gonna fill the roster with G League guys? You gonna try to get Ray Allen to come out of retirement? Like, what, what are you doing? What's your plan? Yeah. You, how you? What are you gonna do? Exactly. Like you don't even have enough players to fill a roster. And then on top of that, why would why would the Orleans want to take that? Oh, we're gonna take all these players. And then what? Well, now we got to figure out who. Now we got like six guys we got to fire. You know? Yeah, and they, they had three guys injured at this time. I mean, <laughs> I mean LeBron, Lonzo Ball, and, and um, Zucker were all out. I mean, it's like, how are you going to feel a team? I agree with you. It was, it was listen, um, it, was, it was insane. And it, it still was insane. I mean, I, I'm not sure what what um, Rob Zelenka and Magic Johnson are thinking at the Lakers. That's a general manager, and, and I guess uh, what's what's Magic's title? President of Player President Operations, of basketball oper- operations, yeah, or something, something like that. that. Right, and uh, Rob Zelenka is the, the, the GM, um, and 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 LeBron, who is kind of assistant general manager and, you know, lead honcho, uh, what they were thinking. Um, but, yeah. my The big question going forward, I, I was listening to Dan Patrick today and I had Chris Manex, who's uh, NBA insider and, and yeah. Sports Illustrated writer. I mean, I mean, where do they go from here? I mean, how do they build a winning team in L.A.? I mean, are they going to get a free agent to come there and play with LeBron, who is like, you know, in, in NBA circles, kind of like a, a, a till of the hunt? I mean, who, who wants to play with him? And I, I, Listen, I think LeBron's a great player. But it's like, who's going to caddy for Tiger Woods? It takes a it takes a, a, a unique personality to be able to <coughs> caddy for Tiger Woods. Pretty great one. Okay, so there's a couple things here. So who's so who's, who's going to play second fiddle? Who's going to play second fiddle <coughs> to LeBron? Is okay, so Kevin Durant, no way. So the funny That's here's the happen. crazy thing is so. And this just shows how everybody evolves in life. Now, when the whole thing with, with Kyrie came out with Cleveland, I wrote an article on it explaining how Kyrie felt. People gave me pushback and said it's bullshit, whatever. And it's not. That's how he felt. That's why he left. He, he balanced. He said that much, you know. And then he starts with Tatum. And... He is now the veteran, and he's been there, and he's done it, and now the young kid doesn't want to hear what he has to say. So, and that's the thing, is like, so he comes out this year, and totally, you know, he apologized to LeBron, he said he apologized to him, and he gave him so much credit for being that leader, but... Even though Kyrie has realized what LeBron did as part of the team and taking a lot of the stuff on his shoulders, you know, at the same time, that I don't think, and what we have to come back to, it doesn't matter where LeBron goes. I think Miami is one of the few situations. But where LeBron is, he alienates people. LeBron James alienates people. Like when he came back to when he came back, you know, from Miami to Cleveland, he alienated a lot of people. Kyrie was alienated. 
you know, in, in that way, you know, Wiggins was shipped off, you know. I mean, there's oh, yeah. guys, you know, guys is just like cascaded off into the abyss. And they all wanted uh, it to be for Kevin Love, for Kevin Love. He wants Kevin Love. And they, they worked did. around to get but Kevin Love. they did win Love. a title. They did. They ended up winning one. They won a title. A couple then. years later. Yeah, he did. That's great. Right. That's good. I mean, but I mean, he came to L.A. with all this young talent thinking, okay, we'll bring in some, a few veterans. We should may be able to make a run at this. And then we'll try to pick up another couple guys over the next two years. That's why he signed a four-year deal instead of a two-year deal. So he's yeah. hoping he wins. So they, brought in, they, brought in, they brought in Ronda. They brought in uh, Lance Stevenson. They brought in a couple guys. I mean, I mean, listen, that's what I'm saying. Is is I watched before he got injured. The bond got injured. That team had won like eight of ten. They were they were starting to gel, right? Yeah, and they were looking good. And I think they still. I, I agree with you. I, I think they. I think they. They still can make the playoffs, but they've got to turn it around. Like. The next game. I mean, they 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 play. I think the next game is it's the next game against the Pelicans. Yeah, it's tomorrow. And then they play the Bucks. And then they play the Bucks. I mean, yeah, they've got to win those games because they're both at home. I think. I mean, they got to win those games. You know, it's crazy. If if, if if they win those games, so how many games do they have between? Between tonight and the and the next time we we talk next Tuesday, who do they play? They have what three day, games. What day is next Tuesday? I have to look. Uh, the fifth. Uh, Tuesday's the fifth. They have four games. They have yeah. They have the Pelicans. They have four Bucks. games. Yeah, the Pelicans, the Bucks. The Phoenix and the Clippers. It's all in the West. Okay. Well, with the extent, I mean, Phoenix, yeah, I'll put that in the West. Go, okay. So they got three games. Because the fourth game's on the night that we actually. It's, no, it's, it's the, the fourth. We no, have to talk, right? no, the fourth. Monday the fourth. Wow. Yeah, they wow. have four, okay. four games so, in the next seven days. Okay. okay. So, so if they go three and one. Right in those games, and and we 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 reconvene next Tuesday night. If they go three and one, I'm all in on them having a chance for the playoffs. If they don't win three of those four games, they're toast because they've got to win three of them. I mean, the math starts to get, and the Clippers are one of the teams are chasing. They got to beat the Clippers, right? Because I think the yeah. Clippers are, in, are are they in eighth right now? Right. So they they got to yep. they got to chip away at this season. I mean, you know, my feeling is they can beat the Pelicans. You know, they can beat the Clippers. They I mean, can they're beat, four games back. Uh, the who Clippers. else they play? See, this is the thing: is like the I don't, Pelicans. I don't, I don't get it. Why everybody's like, there's no chance. They're only four games behind the Clippers. And they play the Clippers twice, right? Right. I mean, no, no. I don't say there's no chance, but they they've pay, got to play better than they did against. They're five and a half games behind I mean, Utah. They play Utah twice. You beat those two right. teams. They're, now you've moved yeah. up. That they're, means you would be in the eighth spot. I, I got you. They're, they're three games out of eight. They're three games out of eight. They're, they're two games. Actually, they're only two games out of the loss column. Okay, but two games, two games out of the lost column from eighth play. But those four games, they, they they've got to go three and one. But then they get two and two, they lose ground. There's two of those teams they they're, or teams are chasing. So, so I I'm just saying when when we when we reconvene next week at this time, right? Um, we'll have to see where they where, where they stand. I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan, so I'm, I'm hoping they win three of those four games. I'm hoping they win all of them. 
Um, I, I can't wait to see him play. I can't wait to see LeBron James against Tariq Freak. That's going to be fun. That's going to be a fun basketball game. So let's, we'll see. Let's I, it, uh, you know, the more interesting game. I mean, I mean, I mean. I mean We'll be actually on the sixth. I want to see them I mean, play Denver. Living. I want to see how they play against Denver. Yeah, but they're. Yeah, but they're. But but you know. Yeah. I know what you mean. They're on a very short. They're on a very short leash, right? I mean, I mean, their margin for error is very small. I mean, they can't. They can't go screwing. They can't go giving games away. Right. I mean, so their next five games, you got Denver. If they go four and one in those games, I'm in. If they go two and three, they're out. They're probably not going to make it. I mean, they can't. They they can continue to you know, dig themselves a hole. And we'll see what what influence LeBron if he can. If, can he put this team on his shoulders? I mean, listen, he's put a lot worse teams on his shoulders. Yeah. And taken them to the finals. Yeah. Right. I mean, I mean that. that that second, that first year he was in Cleveland when he came back, that was not a good basketball team. And, and well, he, he was a final. He went there with Eric Snow. It was, it was it Eric Snow and oh, oh the, uh, who, who oh, else? The that, first, the, the one that got time, swept. The, but yeah, I think I think you and I were I think you and I were on that squad. Yeah, I mean, I mean we could have made that team. That was a bad basketball team. And he took them to the final. Yes, they got swept. That was his first finals appearance. But, yes, he, he can put a team on his back. But you know, the problem now is he's, he's, he's 34 years. He's older now. I'm, I'm not sure he can do it. Um, but he, he had a triple double the other night. I mean, the, the guy can still play basketball at, a, at an extremely high level. So we'll see. We'll see. But he's gotta, they, they've got to win, you know. They, they've got to win these games. I mean, you know, it, it's all about winning basketball games, and, and I think they, I think they can. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you that they can't. I, I'm not saying they can't. I'm just not sure they will. You understand I me? Mean, that's a difference. I mean, yeah. I, I think they can. I, I'm just not sold on them. I, I've got to see the next five or six games. You know, can they turn it on? Because because they did turn it on earlier in the season. They started the season like three and five or whatever it was, and they won like I don't know eleven of the next twelve games, or eleven of the next thirteen games, and they were going great guns. And then LeBron got injured, and then and then and then Lonzo got injured. And to get the team back, I you know I'd love to see that happen. I just I'm just I'm just waiting to see that chemistry because they've got some good players, Ingram and Kuzma, and McGee in the middle. It's when he's, when he's I think plays, it's good. I think. Um, four hard. four games is their I mean, longest is winning streak this year. Well, they got to pull something close to that in the next six games. I mean, they got to win five of these next six and get themselves in this position, you know, to, to, to make a run. I mean, LeBron's saying all the right things. I mean, but... Uh, I mean, they, 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 all okay. So the they, last time they, they played weakness, the Clippers, they, have they didn't have LeBron. They didn't. Yeah, but they have a weakness. They they do they have a fundamental weakness in their lineup. They don't have an outside shooter, a consistent outside shooter. Well, and that's I mean that's that's a basketball thing. That's not a, that's not a chemistry thing. That's not a LeBron being a jerk thing. That's not alienation of the team. They have a fundamental. Although Bullock, Bullock, in, Bullock in after the la- over the last like four games is, has come in off the bench and shot pretty well. So Bullock, yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah he's filled that a little bit, but boy, they could use you're right. They they could use a JJ Redick. I mean, I'm I'm surprised they didn't make a move at the at the trade deadline to get a shooter. I mean, I mean, I'm not I'm surprised Magic didn't do that. Go ahead and get somebody because because just see if you remember in Cleveland, <coughs> LeBron had uh, Kyle Korver. Yeah. In Miami, in Miami, had Ray Allen. Right. You had a guy that could come off the bench and just just you know 
knock down some outside shots. They don't have that guy. <laughs> they just don't. I mean, it's a basketball thing. I'm not. I'm not. This isn't about you know who did who to what. You know who or you know. I'm talking about a, a absolute basketball fundamental thing. They don't have a guy they can bring off the bench to knock down outside and, shots. And Corver. And that's a JJ Reddick. Corver's with. Corver. He got traded to. He plays for the Jazz now. I know. I know. I know. And, you know, and Ray Allen, when he. I mean, they got. They, they picked him up in Miami. He hit, he hit the jumper that won the, the, won the title See, yeah. in Miami. Right? And so, you know, they don't have that guy right now in L.A. Uh, now, Kuzma can do it. Kuzma is a, a, a decent outside shooter. But you don't have that guy. Lance that, Stevenson's that, uh, shooting almost 40%. Yeah, he can. But, but they don't have that guy that the defense is, they don't. Oh, we've got to take care of this guy. That, that, and then and so to open space for everybody else, right? Um and so that that's what they're lacking uh, in, in L.A. At, at the moment. Now, LeBron can knock it down. I mean, he's, his shooting has improved so much over the years. But they just don't have a guy like Corver or Ray Allen um, that they had, you know. And even Actually, even Kevin Love. Kevin Love in, in Cleveland could go out there as a big guy and knock down, and knock down outside shots. They don't have that guy in L.A. <laughs> Not that's consistent. And so that's what they're lacking. And that's why, you know, you see these lapses in defense. All it, 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 it comes down to that because when you're train, playing the, the current game, you know, Houston, um, uh, Golden State, you know, the, the, the good team, those guys just, Clay Thompson and Harden and Curry, these guys are Durant. They're just knocking down those three. I mean, they're just knocking them down all all night long. <laughs> and LA doesn't have that guy. And so, I mean, that's I I would love to see Clay Thompson go to LA. If 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 LA if, if Magic Johnson could figure out a way to get Clay Thompson to LA after this season, because Clay Thompson would be an unrestricted free agent after this year. Oh my gosh, that 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 could mean a title for them. You know, we'll see. And, and indications are Thompson wants to stay in, in Golden State, so we'll see if they can convince him to go. So, but, but that's all. This is just basic basketball stuff. I mean, all the drama aside and all the other stuff aside, it, it's roster issues. And I, and I understand why they wanted LeBron would you know looking to make a move. But Anthony Davis isn't the guy. They need to get a shooter. Not a inside person because the game isn't played inside. Just not. I mean, you don't win titles inside. The last. So okay, San Antonio had Tim Duncan when they beat uh, LeBron this last year in, in Miami. But the two years that he won in Miami, there was an inside guy. Uh, uh, Chris Bosh didn't play inside. There's a tall guy who play inside. And Golden State didn't win it with an inside presence. They won three of the last four titles without an inside presence. <laughs> They've got Boogie, Boogie Cousins now, but they're kind of dysfunctional at the moment. But, you know, that's not where you win it. Not, not today. There's guys out there. They can find... Oh, I... Listen, I love, I love your, I love your call. They should go out and get JJ Redick. I mean, that, that's a, that's a. Magic Johnson should, you know, that, that's a. He can really open up that offense for them. And 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 Redick, and Redick's not doesn't have to be the guy. Yeah, so he's not a threat to to to, um, to LeBron, right? I mean, because I'll tell you what, ego perspective. I would I mean, gladly Redick, take. I would glad. They seem to be so hard over. Catavius Caldwell Pope. I'll take JJ Reddick over Car- Caldwell Pope every day. Well, I, I would too, but but Caldwell Pope's their 
their best shot at the moment because he's he's their best outside shooter. But but he's um he only, he's like a twenty inconsistent. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, the he thing is, he's he like open. he's the funny he thing is is enough. he's he's as sporadic as J.R. Smith. Just J.R. Smith gets more in bunches than he does. Like when J.R. Smith is on, he's on. He just nails them. But he misses a whole bunch before that. So for J.R. Smith to shoot around 34% from three-point range, he's jacked up a whole bunch of threes. Uh, yeah, the, the Cobalt folks' problem is he, he doesn't get his, he doesn't, he doesn't get as much space <laughs> all the time. I mean, he gets a few shots. But if you watch him, he, he gets he gets caught up in traffic and, and doesn't get out there enough. Um, you know, it, it, when, when you when you watch the guy like Ray Allen, I mean, it's kind of tough to watch Ray Allen a, a little bit in, in terms of his style. But Ray Allen found a way to get open, right? I mean, and and, and Ray Allen was a catch and shoot guy. I mean, <laughs> well, he became a catch and shoot. He get that ball to Ray Allen. He, Oh, Ray Allen was a great player from, from oh, yeah. college on. Yeah. But, yeah. But, I mean, he but, was Jesus. Yeah, so Colo Pope. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was he was amazing. Um, but, yeah, Colo Pope's could be, yeah, the, the, the Lakers have to have to get a guy that can, because Colo Pope, as good a shooter as he, he doesn't threat, he doesn't open up the offense. I mean, my point is, he doesn't open up the offense. J.J. Redick will open up the offense because you got to you got to account for him, and that that's why the Sixers. Let me tell you, the Sixers are the real deal. They're a good basketball team. When you watch them play, they that process has kind of worked over there in Philadelphia. Um, if Boston's struggling, Toronto's inconsistent, but Philadelphia, that yeah. You know, I'm not saying they're going to win a title, but they're they're good. I'm just stay trying to take a look over here. Um, so I have NBA talk tonight, man. Yeah, that's, that's, I mean, I think we've talked more NBA tonight than we've talked in the in the entire four years that we've been. <laughs> Maybe. Which, I think it's a tribute to the NBA. I mean, there's there's something good going on there, right? Yeah. Fact that we're talking about it. Well, this time of year, I started talking more NBA because there's nothing else on TV. You know what? I've been keep telling myself yeah, I'm going to watch AAF games, and I haven't, or XFL, and I haven't. No. No. I just haven't. I can't. I. I, I, I was, somebody told me today, oh, there's football on. I'm like, what? I'm going to have to check it out. But I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm watching golf on. You're like. And, 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 you know, Tiger's been playing. And, and Tiger was in contention the last couple of weeks. So, you know, um, uh, actually, he played really well in Mexico, but, but couldn't make a putt. I mean, his putting was horrible. Or <laughs> he'd been, although. Dustin Johnson ran away with it, which he, he tends to do when he's playing really well. But um, yeah, Tiger was in the mix. I think he's finished in the top ten. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. I, you know, I would have to say that I'm. I still, I'm predicting Tiger will win a major this year. Um, oof, that's a, it's a, it's a long limb to be out on, but I'm, I'm predicting Tiger's going to win a major. My major winners this year, I'm predicting, are going to be. Uh, uh, Tiger, Dustin Johnson, Ricky Fowler, and Matt Kuchar. There you go. I'll write about that later in the week, but I'll post it out to the site. But I'm working on a piece right now. So if I get one of them right, I might be successful. But you know. just got to get one right. The way Tiger's playing. I, no, the way Tiger's playing, I, I, 
I, I still have to. I still have to put him as. A, I have to put him in favor of the Masters. He's. He's. He looks like he's preparing for the Masters. When I watch him play, he's. He's not playing the golf course that he's playing at. He's preparing for the Masters. That's how I see him playing. Because he doesn't care about these others. He, he's. He's. He's still caring about the. the you know, that's what he's doing. He's, he's looking for. That, that next major. And I, I just see him. He, he had a lot of irons off the tee, stinger irons off the tee in Mexico. I think, I think he's, he wasn't, he wasn't playing to win that tournament. He was sitting there playing, preparing for Augusta. He that's, four putt. That's how I saw it. Hmm? How did he four putt? Well, um, yeah, exactly. Well, the first putt. <laughs> well, the first putt in that hole was tough. Uh, it was downhill. I watched. It, it, it got away from him a little bit. Um, those Poana greens, as it gets later in the day, are they just fast? Poana grows really fast. Yeah. Well, no, they're they're they get they get they get fast, but they grow and they get. Um, Sticky. You get kind of spongy. Yeah. And so, footprints impact. So the short putts, you've got to hit them really firmly. I played Poana Greens in California. You've got to hit it really firmly to make sure it stays on the line. But if it goes off line a little bit, and you hit it very firmly, it lifts out and it just goes a mile the other direction. So that's how they four putt. There were, I think there were thirty something four putts. Jesus, this week, this this past week. <laughs> okay, be, be, because it, it's just the nature of the greens, and and, and Tiger generally puts Poena really well because he grew up in California. But it just happens, and if you're off the line a little bit, um, hell, well, that was um, his that first poor, four, four putt first four putt of his career, wasn't it? Something like that. It was Matt Kuchar three putted from two feet. <laughs> two feet. Two feet. That's that's less than a step. Two feet. Like yeah. a normal stride is three feet. Two feet. Yes, he two put. He three putted from two feet. That's so. His, that's so happy. His Gilmore putt was from going the hole. Yeah, was from farther away than his first putt was. So. So, it, it, you know, it's and plus, I will also say, also say this is that at that point in in the tournament, Tiger realized he wasn't going to win. I, I, I think he lost concentration. Okay, I, I I've been watching Tiger, following Tiger. You know, I've written a lot about Tiger for the last twenty five years, and I think I think he just lost concentration. And you can't lose concentration on those. Thank things. you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye. Whoop.